Second year Nebraska head coach Bill Callahan and his Cornhuskers have enjoyed some home cooking in 2005. All of their games this far have seen a sea of red at Memorial Stadium. The only bump in the road was last week's loss against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. And speaking of the road, that's where they'll be tonight as they visit the Lone Star State of Texas to take on the upstart Baylor Bears. Third year head coach Guy Morris and his club made history last week at Iowa State as they snapped a 37 game Big 12 Conference road losing streak. It was the program's first ever Big 12 road win. It's the Baylor Bears, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and it's next on FSN. Gorgeous night for football in Waco, Texas. Floyd Casey Stadium, the home to the Baylor Bears. The Baylor Stampede made their way out just moments ago. The student section for the Baylor Bears as they will welcome Nebraska to town. It's their first road game of this 2005 campaign. It's the Baylor Bears, Nebraska Cornhuskers, close to 50,000 here tonight in Waco. Alongside of Gary Reasons, my name is Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to college football here on FSN. Both these teams are four and one. They're even in conference play in the Big 12 at one and one. So you know, both these schools have a very meaningful game here tonight. Well, very opportunistic. These two teams coming into this year, they didn't know what was going to happen. What team was going to show up? Baylor didn't do very well last year, but they had some, you know, makings of a good football team. Guy Morris now with four wins. They're looking for a bowl opportunity. You take Nebraska. It's a team that's really improving week to week. I think that they've got a chance to be a pretty good football team. And Gary, as you well know, quarterback play has to be so good, and it's so key in the college game, and it starts with Nebraska's Zach Taylor. Well, Zach Taylor, he's a guy, he's a junior, he's a quarterback, he's not making mistakes. And what I mean by running Bill Callahan's offense, it's a system where the quarterback has to perform, and he has to be key. He's done a good job. One game this year, over 400 yards passing. That's a Nebraska record. On the other side, you've got for, for Baylor quarterback Sean Bell, who is a junior as well, and he has played very consistent. He does not make mistakes also. So these quarterbacks are very similar, and they're key components to their football team success. If you like the kicking game, if you like special teams, you're going to have two great teams going head to head tonight. Well, really, a couple teams that coming into the season, one of the emphasis they wanted to have, Dan, was to improve their special teams. Both teams have and has paid dividends for them on the field. All right, we're set to go. It's the first road game of the season for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. They invade the Baylor Bears. Big, big crowd here tonight. Close to 50,000. The Baylor Bears against the Big Red. You know, they travel well. They're here tonight. Starting lineups, the opening kickoff coming up next. Welcome back to Baylor. Big win for the Bears last week against Iowa State on the road, 23 to 13, their first road victory in 37 tries within the Big 12 Conference. And for Nebraska, last week a loss, 34-31 to Texas Tech, one of the best offensive teams in the country. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast crew, and that's Greg Sharp. Greg? Dan, as you mentioned, these two teams both 4-1, and one. and if you look at the statistical comparison between the two teams, they're almost identical. What that could really mean, special teams will play a huge role. We could see some punting really affect this game, and both teams have excellent punters. Daniel Sepulveda for Baylor was last year the Ray Guy Award winner as a sophomore. First time that has ever happened. He averages 46 yards a kick. For Nebraska, Sam Cook is the punter. Cook averages 44 yards a kick, including an 84-yarder against Pitt earlier this year. Punting 101 on this play here tonight. Both teams 4-1, and one, as you guys mentioned, but different roads. Dan, as you said in the open, Nebraska's first road game for Baylor, only their second home game, and these fans, including the Stampede, they're ready. Well, there is excitement. Thank you very much, Greg, with this program. And, Gary, you take a look at it. You know, last two years under their head coach, Guy Morris, rebuilding this program. Now they can take that ultimate step and have a chance to beat the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, and what they're looking at, realistically, Guy Morris knows he's probably not going to win the Big 12 South. You got Texas, Oklahoma, those guys in the South with him. But he's really realistically looking at a team that possibly, if they get the six wins on the year, they'd go bowling and they'd be very, very happy with that. Bill Callahan on the other side in his second year at Nebraska. Of course, many fans remember his two year run with the Oakland Raiders, in which he guided them to a Super Bowl appearance. Overall record with the Cornhuskers is at 9 and 7. 
Now this is the 10th meeting between the schools and the first time they met all the way back in 1939 and Baylor's lone win in this series came back in 1956 last year it was Nebraska walloping in 59 27 Baylor will receive they take it on their own six and we're underway. It's taken outside across the 15 and that's where Baylor will have it first and 10 on our first possession of this ball game. The Baylor Bears offense and you look at what Nebraska has done offensively as well. I mean these two teams Gary match up just about identically statistically and that includes all the way down to the quarterback. There's a look at Sean Bell the 6 1 junior over 2000 yards in his career. They like to mix it up with the run in the pass. They've been very efficient offensively really both teams but Baylor what they'll do is they'll try to do a lot of formations different personnel to confuse the defense. Brent Pease their offensive quarter he's put a pretty good game plan together he hopes to go against his black shirt defense. Put a man in motion that's Dominique Ziegler. A flag on the play roll out right looking it is caught and Sean was Sean the 5'9 senior and he's brought down and knocked out of bounds at the 40 but it looks like that's going to be brought back. Didn't see the penalty through a flag from the near sideline the near line judge it normally means that offensive uh, motion penalty perhaps. Referee tonight Steve use umpires Richard Brown. Here's a look at Guy Morris. He is a native of Colorado City, Texas. So he is from the Lone Star State. Illegal formation. On the line of the players on the line of the score. Five-yard penalty. Previous spot. Still first down. So that negates a big pickup for Baylor on their first possession and first play of this game. Let's meet the offense. The offensive line is anchored by their center, Glenn Oskin. It is big up front. They average over 300 pounds. The skill positions are very good. Paul Mosley, the 6'3 junior out of Austin, Texas, their leading carrier. And you also have to look at Smith, Ziegler, and Shelton as well. So the ball rests now inside the 15. It's on the 14. Man in motion yet again. Bell with an empty backfield swings it on the left side. That's Trent Shelton. And he is brought down by Courtney Grixby, the 5'9 sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska. Take a look at this Nebraska defense. They lead the nation in sacks with 30 already this season. And already tackles for a loss is number one in the country as well. It is a 6'2 senior, one of the top linebackers, and really a surprise for the linebacking core of Nebraska. He is filling in for the injured Stuart Bradley. One man in the backfield along with the quarterback Bell. Man in motion is Ziegler. Now you see what I'm talking about? Formations. Four, three different formations on these first three plays for Baylor. Trying to run the ball inside here. They're trying to confuse the Nebraska defense with the formations. A couple of plays there. They throw the ball. A couple of those first two plays with success with Sean King throwing the football, but have to get the guys on the line of scrimmage to make those count. But brings up a third down here in long situation. That's not something that Baylor wants to do, being third long against a very aggressive Nebraska defense. You mentioned their sacks, Dan. Dan, those guys get in the backfield. I mean, they play in the opposing team's backfield. They've done so all season. One man out wide left. That's Ziegler. Watch out for him. He's the speedster. They put him in motion. He wears number seven for this Bears offense. Here is Bell rolling out right pressure on him puts it up in the air and it's caught. Trent Shelton with the catch and a first down for Baylor. Well that should be on might be Sean Rashawn coming back with that catch he steps up in front and he does a good job of getting a little separation from the defender from Nebraska. You go see Sean Rashawn get past the first down line and work back to the quarterback. Good protection up front the big guys are working well. Sean Bell steps out of the pocket and throws to Rashawn right past that 30 yard line which is a first down here for Baylor. Big first down for the Bears first possession we're just underway here from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco Texas. Handed off this time to Paul Mosley. And he is met rudely right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Well, I think this game is really going to come down to who can play well on the trenches. The offensive line for Baylor, you talked about how big they are. They've got a couple of guys up there with a lot of experience. Lakola McDonald, their left guard, and Oskin, their center. A couple of seniors up there that anchor that thing. And Evan Stone's not a bad player himself on the left side. So that offensive line has to find a way to negate the penetration and the, and the physical style of play that Nebraska likes to play defensively. That's what Guy Morris was telling us yesterday. He thought the key to this game is winning 
in the trenches not the skill positions not the quarterback play but the line play on both sides of the football second down and ten looking right side has a man and right through the hands of Dominique Ziegler that's the third time they've tried to go to Ziegler already here in the first two minutes well, I really like what I'm seeing from Sean Bell he's composed back there he's making the right decisions and the balls he's thrown have all been on target tonight so it's just gonna have to have his receivers keep up with him because looks like he's got his a game going so far in his ball game good protection up front and watch Sean Bell lay this ball in there Ziegler should make this catch coverage there by Courtney Grigsby the sophomore now it's third and nine Out of the shotgun is Sean Bell. Looks left side. Fires. It is caught. It's near a first down. Trent Shelton with the catch, the junior. Yeah, it's going to matter on where they spot this football. Look very, very close. And looks like it's going to be right at the line and perhaps a first down here for Bader. That's a huge pass. I'm not sure that. Didn't know exactly where he was going to come down with this football, where they were going to mark it, but Sean Bell actually throws over a defender, a little loft on that ball, and gets it right out to Shelton on the sideline. Good throw and a good grab. Trent Shelton, 71 yards, short of 1,000 receiving yards in his career. Yeah, that's now 28 straight games that Trent Shelton has caught a reception in his career here at Baylor. That's an impressive number. Go out there and be productive for your football team. And now 19 catches, second most on this team. They're going to measure this, take it all the way across the field and make sure the spot's correct here before they award the first down. I think they got it. It's going to be awfully close. First down for Baylor. Well, Guy Morris has to like what he sees in his offense coming out here doing well against uh, this Nebraska defense. Let's take another look at the spot here. Sean Bell tosses the ball out. A little bit of a loft on it so that Shelton can go up and pull this ball down and or we'll see a good spot there, but that line judge is right on the spot there, so it looks like he's going to make the pretty good judgment, and Guy Morris got to be pleased. Baylor came in at 46% on third down conversions. They get another. They're now 38 of 81 on the year. Out of the shotgun is Bell. Wants to throw again. Across the middle has a man. His big tight end. That's Jay Fields. He's near midfield. The 6'3 senior from Amarillo, Texas. His sixth catch of the season. Well, Jay Fields, the big tight end, is going to be on the, light, on the side of the screen here. He's going to work right in the middle of the field. And good shot, good throw, get between the linebackers. That's a nice positive play. Close to a first down. It'll be second down and one. Ball now resting in Nebraska territory. Impressive drive in this first of the game for the Baylor Bears, trying to set a tone. Guy Morris telling us this would be one of the biggest wins for Baylor in the last 10 years, and now they've got to call a timeout. Didn't like what he saw. Well, there's a look at Sean Bell, coached by his father, Mark, from China Spring, Texas. They're off to a great start, but Sean was telling us last night they've got more to build on. Well, I don't think we've proved anything yet. You know, four and one's good, but uh, that's not what we want. That's not our overall goal. We got to get at least six wins. That's our goal to go to a bowl game, and uh, we're not satisfied right now. We're not going to be satisfied until we get to, you know, where we want to be. So, I mean, we've proved a little bit, but at the same time, we got so much more to prove. And Gary, you think about what took place last week: 23-13, and they won on the road. They yeah. hadn't done that. In years. Well, you take baby steps first, and that's what Guy Morris did. He took go back a year ago. They beat Texas A&M, you know, a game in overtime that they won that ball game and had a chance to win the Texas A&M gift this year down at College Station, and looks like they had a chance to do that. And, and actually, last week was a pretty big win, the road win against Iowa State. Take a look at some action from that ball game, and Sean Bell and his teammates, they looked like they were a team ready to win a football game on the road. They got that one done, and I'll tell you, the defense played well. It was a pretty good football game all around for Baylor, and they played inspired football, and they came away with a huge victory for them. Huge win, and uh, of course, Guy Morris would get the uh, the Gatorade. You've seen that a time or two, haven't you? Yeah, the old water going down. I used to have a coach we'd do that too <laughs> years back in the Now, New your York. team started that, right? Yeah, old uh, Harry Carson actually gets credit for the uh, the old bath. 
on the coach. I'm sure Guy Morris was uh, more than happy to take that bat. Not a problem for him. Hey, they win football games. I bet they let him shave his head the whole bit. That's <laughs> right. Guy Morris is a former NFL guy. He's, he's a former player in the league, and he's been a coach in the league for a long time. 18 years. And his coaching staff is really a tremendous group. They've got instant respect from their players because they've got so much res uh, experience in the league, over 100 years collectively with his coaching staff of either coaching or playing in the National Football League. And when you assemble a staff like that, do you think you can recruit? Well, Guy Morris has started to recruit and get some good players here at Baylor. And he's got a majority of his roster with the exception of 12 players from the state of Texas. Let's check back in with Greg Sharp. Greg. Dan, it's been the year of the streak buster so far for Beta. They won for the first time outside the state of Texas when they beat Army earlier this year. Guy Morris isn't surprised by this. He said his goal all along was for this team to get to a bowl game. And they are now two wins away from being eligible. Four and one on the season. Bell rolls right. Has a man out of the backfield. His big fullback. That's a first down for Baylor. They just keep rolling along. A good job here. Play action pass and take a look at Sean Bell getting out to the flat. That might be Brandon. Well, was a linebacker. That's Van actually getting the catch there. First catch of the season, seldom used out of the backfield in the passing game. And off up the middle, not much doing there for Paul Mosley. If they've had success, Gary, on this first drive, it's been through the air, not running the football at all. And that's not surprising because Nebraska is one of the best defensive teams in the country as far as stopping the run. And this team has done a good job overall. Right now, early in this ball game, controlling Mosley inside there. Just you see the big defensive tackle stepping up and then the linebackers flow. The linebackers have played exceptionally well for Nebraska this year. And overall, that front seven, they'll play a lot of people on defense. They'll play three cornerbacks. They'll play three safeties. They'll play four linebackers and they'll actually play eight defensive linemen. So they'll roll a lot of players in the game on that defensive side for Nebraska. Second and ten. Bell through the air again. And he's got his big tight end, Jason Smith. A red shirt freshman out of Dallas, Texas. His fourth catch on the season. Wide open over the middle. Well, Jason Smith just works to the middle of the field between the linebackers again here. Looks like the linebackers for Nebraska are actually staying a little bit at home. Watch these guys stand inside there. And don't get the reroute there. And they're trying to cover from the weak side on the tight end. And Linebacker just doesn't come across on it, and that's Bo Rudd does not come all the way across to the tight end to make that play. They're trying to rotate over and just didn't get over to the big tight end. So now it's first and ten for Baylor inside the 25. Impressive first drive of this ball game. Bell under center. Wants to hand it off. This is Mosley. Has a little bit of a hole. Dives across the 20. Down near the 17. Paul Mosley out of Austin, Texas. Sixth best in the Big 12. Well, with nearly 86 yards and average per game. Yeah, he's kind of a one-two tandem here. They've got another back back there, Whitaker, that they'll run as well. Those two together, Mosley's going to give you those pounding heavy yards inside from a big strong tail back. And then they'll bring a changeup guy in and Whitaker. And we'll, I'm sure we'll see him in his ball game as well. He's kind of a scat back and a quick guy. Just a change of pace for a defense to deal with. Bell is changing up the play out of the shotgun wants to throw looks left side it is picked off by Courtney Grixby terrific play by the defensive back for Nebraska Courtney Grixby the sophomore from Omaha it was bobbled it was a tip drill and he picked it up and we have a flag on the play Well, Sean Rashawn almost pulls this ball in, but he bobbles the ball, and Sean Bell throws it out there nice. He throws it to his back shoulder, which is what you need to do on this one-on-one -on -one coverage. The ball is bobbled, but Grixby just finds the ball, comes right into his kitchen right there, and he pulls it in. What a break here for Baylor as it keeps their drive alive. Well, let's take a look here at the pressure on the quarterback, Sean Bell, and watch on the bottom side of your screen. He's definitely a step late there. That's Jay, that's Moore. Jay Moore, the junior, part-time starter a year ago. Bill Callahan. Hey, he's from the Raiders. He's used to seeing that. <laughs> yeah, they've got some problems out there that every now and then with that, but he doesn't want it for his Nebraska football team, that's for sure. Now it's first and goal. They're inside the 10. 
chewed up an awful lot of clock here in this first quarter. Bell looking end zone throws it out of bounds and the coverage there again by Grixby. He was looking for Dominic Ziegler. Yeah, Dominic Ziegler's a guy you want to throw to in the red area down here, Dan, because he's got a good, good size. He's 6'3", 180 pounds. He can get up in the air, can jump real well. So trying to get the points in the end zone on the throw from Sean Bell. Boy, they've gone right at Grixby here on this first yeah, drive. Yeah, they really have. They've gone at him a number of times, and I think he's about 50-50 so far. Yep. One man in the backfield, that's Paul Mosley. Second down and goal for Baylor. Mosley gets the call, cuts it up. Down near the six. Tackle made there by Bo Rudd, the sophomore out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, Luke slides over and makes a dozen nice job. Just follows a big guard around and steps in behind him. It's what linebackers have to do. You have to be able to follow those line tees, and Rude does a nice job of stepping over and getting Paul Mosley, who's a heavy load. Family has, of course, been a part of that tradition and history at Nebraska since the 1970s. Now another flag flies. Yeah, we're going to have an illegal participation here against Baylor. Paul Mosley came off the field after being in the huddle. Dead ball. Dead ball. Illegal substitution on the offense. Broke the huddle with more than 11 players. Boy, Guy Morris cannot be happy with that. Second time on this drive it's happened, Gary. Well, there's something they just need to clean up here. We've got Paul Mosley. Watch him come right down here to the bottom of the screen and coming off the field and right there at the 20 yard line. And the referee steps in and counts out as a penalty. 8.13 to go, first quarter. In Waco, Texas at Floyd Casey Stadium. First drive of this game put together by Baylor. Now they'll go out of the shotgun, third down. Out of the backfield goes Mosley. Three wide receivers out wide right. Looking over the middle. And a flag is going to fly on that pass interference on Blake Tiki. And I think Tiki did to get there a step early. He came from his free safety spot. And a little angle route there by the receiver from Baylor. Ziegler. Yeah, that's uh, Dominic Ziegler going outside and working back inside. And then the free safety. Take a look from the left side of your screen. You're going to have him come inside. And a little contact right there early before the ball is there. And Tiki little shoulder on the uh, shelf. Excuse me, on Ziegler. Pass in the Nebraska is just killing themselves here on this defensive stand with these penalties. Now there's a lot of Nebraska fans here. They've got on the other end of the stadium. So if you heard a bunch of boos, that's because they got the Nebraska faithful here travel down from Lincoln to support this football team. Pretty colorful what we're looking at. First and goal now. The ball resting on the five of Nebraska for Baylor. Play action. Bell. Left side, keeps it himself, tucks it up, close to the end zone. Did they give it to him? Yes, they did. It's a touchdown for Baylor. Now this is a play action pass. They're going to try to give it their tight end, but he gets knocked down in the middle, so Sean Bell has to run it around. Pump fake there and sticks it right across the goal line. In college football, the ball just must break the plane. Line judge there right at the goal line. Rules it a touchdown for Baylor. And the question would be whether he would have stepped out of bounds prior to getting there, but they ruled it a touchdown on the field. The extra point is good, and it's 7-0. Impressive drive for Sean Bell and the Baylor Bears. They jump on top at home against Nebraska. 7-0. Baylor on top. Sean Bell with a five-yard run. Looked like he may have stepped out before he broke the plane. Let's take a look. Well, let's take a look at his left foot, whether he does step out of bounds. Sean Bell comes around. You see the pump fake here. Going to get the linebackers pop up in the air. Something you never want to do is the linebackers jump. But watch his left foot. It's just a judgment call. The line judge is right down here to the left of your screen. 
he's right there to make that call. So he's right on top of it. He's got the best look at it. Sean Bell with his football team. Hey, I think he did a very nice job with his team there, throwing the football, orchestrating that offense. And Baylor, a nice opening drive here, 14 plays in the 81 yards. Of course, Nebraska had an interception that was negated on a late hit. And it was another third down situation pass interference on that first drive for Baylor that cost Nebraska. Havens to kick it away. Tierra Green is there takes that to 10. Now at the 15. And he is going to be wrestled down by a host of Baylor Bears. And that's where Nebraska will take it over first and 10 on their first possession of this ball game. Their quarterback, 6'2 junior, Zach Taylor. For the Cornhuskers of Nebraska, he'll take over. New offense, of course. It's been going now for about a year and a half for Bill Callahan and the uh, Cornhuskers. Last two games, 660 yards passing. They finally feel, Gary, that they're starting to get this thing going. Yeah, they get a little rhythm. They get that offensive line working in conjunction with the backs and receivers. It's kind of an all working together kind of an offense. Bill Callahan knew there's going to be some growing pains. Got to take a little while to get going, but over the last couple of weeks, been a nice production, productive offense. They show all kinds of different sets. They want to throw on their first play. Taylor looking all kinds of protection. Dumps it off to the safety valve, and that's Corey Ross, Mr. Everything for Nebraska. Offensive line, as you might expect, very big. We've got a second year starter, Kurt Mann, their center. He goes at 6'4, 290, and he's probably got the most experience of that offensive line. Very skilled backs and receivers included in there. Corey Ross, who wears number four, he is just a terrific talent within the Big 12. Yeah, not only a good running back, but somebody who catches the ball out of the backfield very well. He's actually their leading receiver on his football team. Little hesitation. Ross brought down near the 25. Close to a first down. They're just a bit short. Baylor defense. They allowed 294 yards. A game which is third best in the Big 12. Only 15 points on average per game. Maurice Lane, All American, the 5'11 senior, is the outstanding. Outstanding free safety for the Baylor defense. Yeah, they'll play a 4 2 5. They call a couple outside safeties, almost like linebackers here. Taylor across the middle, first down. Catch is made by Grant Mulkey. He's been a pleasant surprise for the Cornhuskers. Yeah, been a productive receiver for him. They'll use him on a number of sets. Grant Mulkey just going to work into the middle of the field. A good shot here by Taylor to, to get his offense clicking here, get a good first down for him. Watch his shoulders and eyes. It's something that a quarterback has to learn. That is to look the defenders and off and give your receivers from the opposite side a chance to work into those open areas. Work nicely there for the Huskers. One man on the backfield, that's Corey Ross. Under center goes Zach Taylor. First and ten now for the Cornhuskers, down by seven. And the give is to Ross. He cuts it up. Pick up of four on the play, brought down at the 35. Well, one of the things that's always been a constant with Nebraska is the offensive line play. And when these guys can get off to the second level, watch the surge by the offensive line, the steps and the get up to the second level. You see those guys get on the linebackers, that's going to pay dividends. Now, they can't let guys slice in from the backside like they did for the Bears that time, but good job of the offensive line. They want to be active. They want to take Kurt Mann, Greg Austin, Brandon Cook up there, the guards and center, and they want to put those guys on the second level. That's what makes big runs in the running game. Long side of Gary Reasons. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Greg Sharp also with us. Big 12 football on FSN. Nebraska and Baylor. 7-0 Bears at home. Play action. Taylor looking. Looking. Puts it up in the air, and it's up for grabs and knocked out of bounds. Now he's lucky to get rid of that football because Montez Murphy, number 95 for Baylor, Baylor, was right in the kitchen of Zach Taylor here as he throws his football. He's going to pressure from the right side, the right defensive end, and it's going to be all he can do is just get rid of this ball. Take a look at Murphy right at the end there. A good arm strength there by Taylor, throwing it all the way down the field some 40, 45 yards. And almost a catch here by Baylor, defended Swift trying to knock that ball away. And Knocks it out of the hands of, Ireland, of uh, Arthur, James Todd on the side. James Todd, the six-foot junior out of Marshall, Texas, and there's a look at Murphy. I will mention all Big 12 a season ago. Taylor with all kinds of time across the middle, and it is caught at midfield. Hardy with the catch. 
And that's a big league catch there to come out all the way from the outside and work across the middle. And you know what's going to happen here, Dan? You know you're going to get hit by a safety when you make this catch. France Hardy got the start of this ball game over Flewell, and he's going to be at the top of the screen and work all the way down to around midfield and come across and get into that BU right there, right in the middle of the field, and watch the contact that he takes and still makes that grab. Mentioned the name of Flewell, and he will not play tonight. He had two touchdown catches last year against Baylor. So that's a loss out of this offense for Nebraska. Taylor again wants to throw. Pressure. Gets rid of it. It's Ross, and he's got blockers. But whistles will blow the play dead. Well the umpire's right there and he's saying that Corey Ross had a knee on the ground when he grabbed his football and going to be second down here actually lost a yardage on that because Corey Ross was five six yards behind the line of scrimmage when he grabbed that football. Matter of fact Gary they lost uh, seven yards on that play. Well, let's take a look at a hold on right there and you'll see where Corey Ross is right in the middle of the field. He's right there and well I don't know. I didn't see his knee down Richard Brown that's the umpire there on the left side of your screen. He's the one that makes this call that calls Corey Ross down. Let's take a look at the kind. His knee was down, but didn't know if he got it up in time to catch that football. But the umpire right there says, nope, not going anywhere, young man. Long second down. Trying to force it to J.B. Phillips. It's knocked away. Good defensive play by the Bears, Jamal Harper. And Harper does a good job of working with his off hand, come around and knock that throw away. No contact with his right hand because that would have been interference. A couple of teams here, I think, playing good, smart defense, not making any mistakes offensively. This is just good defensive plays right here. Pass defense has been very good. Seven interceptions, only four touchdowns allowed this season. Second in the Big 12, and that's seventh in the country for the Baylor Bears. Well, that's Bill Bradley. He's a defensive coordinator, former NFL guy. He's got a lot of experience, and he's brought a wealth of knowledge and actually a lot of different angles here at this defense for Baylor and they've done a tremendous job over the last couple of years of improving and right now they're playing pretty good pass defense. Third down and 17 when we come back the Bears on top at home it's early 7 nothing. Well, welcome back to Floyd Casey Stadium kind of a unique place here where we're at actually it's not actually right on the campus of uh, Baylor and Waco. We're actually in Beverly Hills, Texas. You actually leave Waco to go to Beverly Hills, and that's kind of where we're at. We got the Clampets out here, the whole bit, you know, everything here at the stadium. So Floyd Casey's a little bit away from campus. Did you do some uh, shopping today? I guess. <laughs> Beverly, Beverly Hills. Hills. Beverly Hills. You know, I didn't go down to Rodale. No, okay. I, I missed it. Just checking. Wasn't sure. Second quarter. Here we go. Baylor with their second possession of this game, a lead of seven to three. And Bell wants to throw, swings it out left side. The catch is made by Ziegler. Going to bring up a third down in about six now for the Baylor Bears during that break. Here at uh, Baylor, they honored the 1980 Southwest Conference Championship team, and in particular, Mike Singletary, one of the great, great Chicago Bears, 12-year career in the NFL, but two-time All-American here at Baylor. Yeah, great career here at Baylor and on to the NFL. Great career, had a lot of fun competing against him and his Bears football teams, our Giants teams over the years, and happy for him with the success that he's had in the National Football League. Bell out of the shotgun, rolling right, looking, has a man. It is caught. Sean Rashawn near midfield and picks up a first down for the Baylor Bears. Well, when you watch Sean Bell operate, you have to be impressed with his poise back there, Dan, because what he's doing is moving out of the pocket. He's looking with confidence down the field, and, and then he's got a little bit of chemistry working with his receivers. They're working to find open areas, and Sean Bell is doing a good job of delivering the ball. I haven't seen a throw tonight that has been an errant throw by Sean Bell. He's been on the money with every ball. And, Gary, they've gotten him out of the pocket, too. He's been active. We take a Nebraska defense that leads the nation in sacks with 30, 30 times they've gotten to the quarterback and, and sh shut him down giving him a little chance to get out in space and throw that football. They have had a problem though doing that running the football loss of one there for Paul Mosley. Well that's something that Baylor would like to be able to do is run the football help set up the passing game because they don't want to be one dimensional because if you're one dimensional then you're going to find they're going to find a way they think to slow down that passing game and good job by the Nebraska defense and playing off the blocks and the linebackers sliding and that's good coordinated defense by the Huskers. Loss of two on that play. Second down, 12 to go, 13 and a half to play in our first half. Gary Reasons, Dan McLaughlin, Greg Sharp with you. From Beverly Hills. There you go. Texas. Bell with a little play action. 
floats it up there, nearly intercepted. Well, Ickes wanted to get in on the action there with these linebackers all getting interceptions for touchdowns this year for Nebraska, and he wanted to get his. He's had a couple of blocked field goals, done a great job, and Ickes getting the start because Stuart Bradley is injured with his ACL. He's gone for the year, so Ickes with nice coverage on the outside. Sean Bell trying to float it out there to the fullback in the flat and almost comes down with the pick. Trying to get it out to Keegan Van. Ickes, the 6'2 senior from Page, Nebraska. Third down and 12. 7-3. The Baylor Bears on top, trying to improve to five and one. That's what Nebraska is trying to do as well. Out of the shotgun, Sean Bell floats it out left side and trying to go to Ziegler. A little bit out of his reach, and now Baylor will have to punt it away for the first time tonight. Well, good field position, didn't get anything with it, but uh, now you're going to see a punt situation come up, and you're going to see a guy, Ray Guy, award winner. Take a look at Sheldon here, going to work down the sideline and work to the top of the field. And this ball sails just a little bit here for Sean Bell. That was actually pretty good coverage in the secondary by Nebraska. Courtney Grigsby back deep to receive this punt from Sepulveda, who is trying to become the first two time winner of the Ray Guy Award. This guy can boot it. And he's got a nice percentage inside the 20 as well. That one inside the 20, taken at the 15. Grigsby spinning. And brought down across the 25 near the 27. Back with more in just a moment. You're watching the Big 12 on FSN. Yeah. Played pretty well by Baylor. Brings up a third and five. Marlon Lucky, a freshman from California. Third down and five as this crowd comes alive here in Baylor. And flags will fly, and that uh, play is going to be whistled dead. You wonder if the noise factor plays into what just took place down there. It is loud. That student section for Baylor is right behind the uh, Nebraska bench. Ball start. 75 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Let's take a look on the right side over here and see uh, if we can find. A little movement there, yep, before the, before the snap. Third down and 10 for Nebraska. Taylor gets crushed as he unloads, and good defensive play. Down there by Anthony Arline, and now a flag on the play late. Well, our line has good coverage here. I don't know if this is something after the after the fact the ball got there or, or during the play. Guy Morris certainly not happy with what he's seeing out there with the, with the late flag coming in. I mean that was as late as it gets. You would figure pass interference. Defense. We saw a pass interference call earlier against Nebraska. Now this one in their favor against Baylor. They look on the right side of your screen. Is there a contact there? There's our line at the bottom of the field, and there's well, he's making a tackle. But as the ball gets there, ooh, I don't know about that. Hmm. Regardless, first and ten now. Going nowhere is Corey Ross, and Ross has been quiet so far out of Denver, Colorado. The senior that's. Uh, only goes at five foot six, 195 pounds. Not the prototypical Nebraska back, but this is not their prototypical offense anymore. Yeah, pretty good job here by the defensive front. Michael Gary, defensive tackle, getting in the backfield, not allowing Corey Ross to get started. The defensive pressure here from Baylor's been pretty good up front. Second down and 11. Shotgun now for Taylor. Looking right side has a man and it is caught. Nate Swift inside the 30. Well, Dan, this is nothing more than zone coverage defense. You get your linebackers to drop in the zone. There's two deeps. You're going to have two deep safeties back there, but you've got to make tackles on the outside. You're going to have a safety go here, and then your cornerback's going to have to be responsible for that flat area. Go ahead and let the play run, and we'll take a look at it. We'll see if he makes a tackle out there. He's going to miss the tackle on the outside. You've got the coverage, but you've got to make the play on the sideline. Otherwise, your health is all inside. It's a big play here for Nebraska. Ball on the 29 of Baylor.
This time it's Marlon Lucky. Wow, the second leading rusher, and that was some popping going on down there. Oof. Willie Andrews came rolling in there, the All American candidate. Outside safety, well, <laughs> he put a pretty good pop here on, uh, on Mr. Lucky coming around the edge. That's how you play it. Willie Andrews has started 29 straight games for the Bay Bears. And now whistles before we get going with this play. Timeout. Baylor. So Baylor takes their second timeout of this first half. Look at Guy Morris as we had the break. His Bears on top at 7-3 from Nebraska. He's coming on strong. Of Gary Reasons. Dan McLaughlin, Greg Sharp also with us down on the sidelines. Well, you've heard about the uh, cheese heads <laughs> from Green Bay. Well, now you've got the, I guess, corn heads. That's probably a Husker there. So I would assume. call it a Husker? I don't know. Gary, I don't well, the Husk is the outside, right? I don't think you're going out on a limb and figuring out that's uh, a cob head. <laughs> I'm going to let you call that. <laughs> Either way, Bill Callahan knows he's got one of the best fan bases in all of college football. No it's doubt. Tremendous. Look at this crowd here from Nebraska. They have brought strong, strong support here for this uh, Nebraska football team. And good little trip come down here to Texas to enjoy this one. Beautiful weather. Great night for football. Second down and eight. Zach Taylor is eight of 14 to start this game. And he just picked up his longest of 31 yards. Phillips over to the other side. Now they send a man in motion. And this is Corey Ross. Right side cuts it up across the 25. It'll be third down and about four to go. Now Corey Ross trying to get in behind his left guard here when we call the offside guard pull, the OG pull play. And Corey Ross, boy, almost a step away from breaking one here because the Baylor defense was out man at the point, but somebody came from the inside and got him down. Waco, Texas, Floyd Casey Stadium, the home of the Baylor Bears. They're on top 7-3 over Nebraska. Gary Reasons, Dan McLaughlin, Greg Sharp with you. This crowd again comes alive. Third down and five. Taylor to throw. Steps up, delivers. It's a first down for the Cornhuskers. And the catch is made by Grant Mulkey, his second reception of the night. Well, Grant Mulkey just works up and then works out, and the quarterback hits him well. Mulkey's going to come up and go outside here and take a look at the receiver here. Just going to work to the void of the defense. Safety has to come downhill, and he just cannot get there in time. And good throw by Zach Taylor to get Mulkey. Ball on the 17 for Nebraska. They're in the midst of their second very, very impressive drive of the ball game. Ross brought down at the 13. Well, coaches talk about POA. You know what that is, Dan? It's called point of attack. And the offensive line here for Nebraska, the point of attack on that play, open a nice hole for your offensive line, for the offensive line for your running back. Watch the point of attack here. You see the, everybody on a hat. Look at that spot there that Corey Ross has to run through. If we just hold one block inside, the offensive guard, Corey Ross going to run to the secondary untouched. Six carries for 15 yards. That's it for Ross. He's been held in check. And like you said a couple of times, just a step away from yeah. busting one. Ball rest on the 12. Fumbled it. Got it back, then lost it. Baylor's got it. Huge turnover. Harline picked it up for the Bears. Corey Ross runs so fast, he ran, <laughs> kind of dropped the ball. I think we had a Baylor defender slap in there and knock that ball out, but Corey Ross just kept going, didn't have a chance to go back for it. Baylor found the football. Watch on the left side of your screen and have a little penetration here. The backside defensive tackle, you see the ball come out there, it's going to go outside. Good job of the defense picking it up, and it's a big turnover here. You can't do this when you get down in this territory in a red area. You want to put points on the board, and Corey Ross not being a uh, not being able to take care of that football. Anthony Arline comes up with the football for the Bears. And now the Bears take over their third possession. Van goes in motion. This time it's handed off to 
Brandon Whitaker. The 5'10 sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. Let's check back in with Frank Sharp. Craig. Guys, last year Baylor only forced nine turnovers the entire year. So far this year they have forced 12 for the first and now make it 13 with that fumble that they get from Corey Ross. So their defense doing a much better job getting the ball back for their offense. Matter of fact, they are third in the Big 12. This Baylor defense as far as points allowed and it's only 15 they allow per game. Now that's, that's so shows you how important turnovers are in college football. Maintaining ball security and actually being opportunistic, creating turnovers for you to put your offense on the field. Handed off again to Whitaker. Cuts it up across the 10 near the 12 yard line. So twice they've now gone to Brandon Whitaker and Paul Mosley was ineffective in that first quarter. Well, I think it's kind of by design. You bring the big banger in there and that's Paul Mosley. Let him run inside and now it's a change of pace here for the Nebraska defense to catch up to, to Whitaker who's a faster quicker back the guy who gets into the hole and makes people miss and but still a pretty good job there in the first couple of plays here for Nebraska defensively. Last year he was a medical red shirt was Whitaker recovering from knee surgery. Very very good receiver out of the backfield. He's got 14 catches this season out of the backfield. So Bell will work out of the shotgun. Wants to throw the football. Looking for help and he's brought down inside the five. Terrific coverage by that Nebraska secondary and that's Barry Turner who brought him down. Well Barry Turner gets sacked number 31 here for Nebraska. Good coverage in the secondary. Look down here. These guys are all going to cover up everywhere outside. Nowhere to throw the football. Man coverage underneath to get a free safety help in the middle of the field and then you're in on the outside makes pretty good pressure around the corner and nowhere for Sean Bell to go with this football. Good job by the Husker defense. And Gary, this is when you really need Daniel Sepulveda to be as good as he can be. Well, this is where Coach Morris tells him to put out and says, okay, son, let her rip. <laughs> You've got a lot of field ahead of you. Look at that. 30 sacks for that Nebraska D. From his own end zone. Just trying to let it rip like you said. That'll be taken at the 43. It's cut up. Watch out. Courtney Grixby. Outside. Grixby inside the 10 for Nebraska. Now they get Sepulveda that actually gets him off his pegs. This punter, he's the only guy left on the sideline. Good punt all the way down the field, probably 55 yards or so. But Grixby, one of the one-two guys here for Nebraska, they've done a great job in punt returns. He's going to come down the field and work the outside. Sepulveda, a pretty good athlete in his own right, just gets him by the shoelaces and knocks him off his feet. And otherwise, this is a touchdown for Nebraska. Return of 48 yards for Grixby. They are inside the 10. I tell you, when we talked to Bill Callahan, he was very, very impressed and pleased with how well his special teams have played all year. He talked about that being key in his football game. That's a big play right now. Get the ball at midfield and bring it down inside the 10 yard line. You know, with great field position for your offense. Sepulveda over there. That would be a huge loss for the Bears. Now he stretched out, put both arms out there, and probably landed awkwardly on that upper body. Now it's Ross. Cuts it up inside the five. Protecting the football and they're going right back at the man that coughed it up. Well, he's their, yeah, he's their down in down out back. They're going to give that ball to Corey Ross and he's going to hang on to it this situation. Get in there and make good contact in there and not going to slow him down. He's not a big guy about five 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 six and gets in there behind that big offensive line. You can see the size difference between him and his offensive linemen and that reminds me of a Darren Sproles type player in the backfield. Right. Second down and three to go to get inside that end zone. Maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, couldn't make the cut. Brings up a third and goal for Nebraska. Corey Ross, nine carries for 27 yards. Well, you got to get points if you're down here at Nebraska. You got to put come away with something. Great punt return here to get down inside. Baylor's territory. Baylor wants to negate this situation here altogether, but uh, you've got to get points on the board with this situation. You cannot cost, you know, cannot have another turnover down here. Loading up the left side. They're going to pass all kinds of time. Steps up, unloads, and it's a touchdown for Nebraska. Terrence Nunn. A four yard touchdown reception. Well, a lot of crossing routes that time. Terrence Nunn works actually underneath the linebackers before the goal line and comes across. And Zach Taylor throws a nice football to him. Terrence Nunn, a couple of TDs last week against Texas Tech. And he's just going to work right underneath here. And they're going to get the ball to him 
Good job by Zach Tedder finding him underneath that Bears defense. Taylor is now 10 of 16 for 92 yards in that touchdown. The extra point is good, and Nebraska has their first lead of the night at 10 to 7. Take another look at this touchdown, Gary. Well, it's just going to be one where you mix a lot of players. You get them going a lot of different ways and try to confuse the defense. Terrence Dunn works underneath. Corey Ross goes to the flat. Watch your quarterback's eyes and shoulders. He's actually going to throw the ball over here. Get that ball out to Terrence Nunn. Nice job of getting away from the defenders. I'm surprised that wasn't an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty there at the end of the play because a little unnecessary roughness there by a Bear defensive player throwing Terrence Nunn down. I think that's one that the officials let go and probably should not have. That was Willie Andrews. So the reception for Terrence Nunn. Four yards. Like we said before, for Terrence Nunn, a homecoming of sorts from Houston, Texas, played his high school football at Cypress Falls High School, not too far away from here. Scoring drive, three plays, nine yards, took a minute 19. That's it, all set up from the return, 48 yards by Courtney Grigsby. Now, special teams play a huge factor in ball games like this. We talked to both coaching staffs about that, and that was set up by Good job by the black shirt defense first forcing Baylor in a punt situation out of their own end zone. And you have uh, one of the best punters in the country, if not the best punter in the country, and Sepulveda punting the ball out there. But Grigsby with an excellent return, get them inside the 10 yard line. And three plays later, hey, you get your pie, you get to eat some. A little fun, put some points on the board. 7 3, or rather 10 7, was 7 3 at one point for Baylor on top. And now it's Nebraska up by three. John Rashawn along with uh, Willie Andrews back deep to receive for the Baylor Bears. 5.09 to go in our first half. Onside. Onside kick. Beautifully done, but it rolls out of bounds. Almost perfect there. Mm -hmm. Almost. Yeah, that's one of those things where you just got to feel. You got to feel as a head coach that you make that call. Bill Callahan calls the onside kicker. They probably saw something in the Baylor special teams film where they probably don't cover up that backside very well. And so you put that, that kick on the ground and try to make a play. And it's a penalty. It goes out of bounds. You get either the better of the 35 yard line or where the ball actually goes out of bounds. So they'll take the ball where it goes out and take a look at the approach here. Ball just pushed a little bit too hard. You see the speedy Nebraska players coming down there trying to get to the football, but a little bit too much juice behind it. So Sean Bell and the Bears will take over first and ten. And very good field position. Yeah, you got the old full moon, so you never know what's going to happen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Bell is 8 of 12 for 85 yards. Pretty close to Halloween, aren't we? We're pretty close. Showing blitz is Nebraska. Out of the shotgun, looking. Pump fake, and he's going to be brought down. He threw it out of bounds, but let's see what the call is going to be here. He may have been down before anything took place as far as looking at intentional grounding. Guy Morris can't be happy with that. Now a late flag just drops. Yeah, there's no receiver out there. Titus Adams had him, and Lakeven Smith as well. A couple of guys back there in the backfield, so good pressure. Take a look. Around and he's throwing the football, trying to throw, but there's nobody over there on the sideline. That's the Nebraska sideline. Sean, you got to get it down the field. This is probably a pretty good call by the officials. This is a intentional job on the offense. Ball will put up the spot where he threw it. It'll be second down. And that's a spot foul. They're doing it here. What what the rule is in college football is. If you're outside of the pocket, which he clearly was there, you have to get the ball to the line of scrimmage. He didn't get anywhere close to the line of scrimmage. He, he got over to the Nebraska bench. Second down and 16 now for the Bears. They put together a very impressive drive to start this ball game. Down by three for the first time they trail. Bell, left side, Sean Rashawn. With the catch. Third reception for Rashad tonight. It's Tier Green, a corner sophomore cornerback, coming up, making a nice play on the outside. Give a little cushion, but uh, come up and make a nice play. Now, they talked about their cornerback play with Nebraska. 
kind of a work in progress. A couple of sophomore cornerbacks out there. We've we seen Grits be in the punt return game, and he plays the other corner besides Green. Third and ten. Bell puts it up. And it is caught. How did that come down? Dominic Ziegler was well covered. And Bell just put it up for grabs. And Ziegler came down with it. Wow, that's an amazing grab because the ball stayed up in the air a long time. You're going to have a little bit of late pressure. And linebacker comes and watch Ziegler come back to the football. <laughs> See the Nebraska defender come over the top. I think he actually tips the football. Watch his left hand come on. The, tips the ball right down in the hands of Ziegler. And somehow he makes the catch. There's Bowman on the uh, coverage. Exactly, Bowman. Trying to knock that ball away, just uh, didn't get enough of it. Ziegler comes down with a kind of a circus catch here for his Bears. And it's a first down for Sean Bell and the Baylor Bears. Inside Nebraska territory. And watch out, he's brought down. Huge loss on the play. Well, Muhammad Akeven. was in there. Yeah. Take your pick. Well, Lakeven got in that time, no doubt about it. He didn't have a chance to step up and throw this football. Watch Lakeven Smith come work around from the inside and get right there on Bell. Good quickness inside, and you confuse the offensive line. You got a guy who's a big inside defensive tackle. You think, hey, he can't rush around the corner. No, not so with Lakeev and Smith. Good speed around the edge. Smith has started 29 straight games for that defensive front of Nebraska. Second down and 20. They just hand it off and going nowhere again. Muhammad, the senior. I'm not sure what Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, is thinking here. Second and long, you got our Nebraska defense that is just playing lights out right now, stopping everything that you're trying to do, run the football. Yet here, second and long, you're trying to get some yardage uh, with Whitaker on the ground, and the defense is just playing exceptional right now for Nebraska. I think you got to go to the air and get your quarterback out of the pocket. You've had success with that early in this ball game, kind of gotten away from that for, for Baylor. Baylor doesn't look nearly as comfortable as they once did. Now, there's been some subtle adjustments, I think, by Nebraska. They've taken away any running game that Baylor right. had tried to do in this game, so they've made them one-dimensional. And now you see the pass rush, a couple of sacks in his ball game, up over the 32 now in the season for uh, for the Huskers. Bell in trouble again. Puts it up for grabs, incomplete. Throws it out of bounds. And Sean Bell had no chance as Adams was in there for Nebraska. They're going to have to punt it away again. Be fourth down and 23. And these Nebraska faithful that have made the trek from Lincoln love it. Well, they're playing a lot of guys on defense, too, Dan, because what they do is they roll in that defensive front to keep them fresh. And I think that's key here for them because they want to put a lot of guys out there. They want to play linebackers, defensive backs, and Brent can bring constant pressure. And by bringing the pressure, causing some problems here for Baylor offensively. Sepulveda to kick it away. Back deep to receive. Grixby. Inside his own 15, bounces it out right side to the 20. He set up great field position last time for Nebraska and actually set up the score to put them on top. Short return. And with 2.43 to go, Nebraska will have it. Yeah, great series that time by Nebraska. And, you know, rolling that defensive front in there. We talked with uh, one of their players, Carriker, about that, about how what he thought about getting that extra rotation there and how important that was for their defense. I, I like it. Uh, it keeps you fresh. Uh, last year, a lot of times, even if we were tired, we, you know, you, you kind of had to stay in the game. This year, it keeps you fresh. It gets a lot more guys in the game, a lot more guys in the flow of the game. It gets a lot, a lot more guys' experience. And it also, you know, you're an offensive lineman, you know, it's first, second down. You see one team come in and third down, you know, it's like the next line of guys coming in. You're like, well, they're getting rest. We're not, you know, they're getting tired, but we're fresh. I like it. Well, you know that Adam Carriker loves it. He is second in the Big 12 in sacks with six this season. We've talked about as a team, Gary, the fact that Nebraska defensively, in particular up front, has just been outstanding. Now they've done a great job collectively. The whole group, the linebackers, they've, they've done a good job. The middle linebacker, Corey McKean, has five sacks on the on the season. So they brought some different pressure packages to bring different players to put back in the backfield. And they're actually doing a great job this season and what overall their whole defensive production is. They've done a great job with putting pressure in the backfield. And let's take a look at what the Nebraska's actually done this year on it. 30 quarterback sacks. Look at all the hurries. 52 quarterback hurries. That's what happens when you get back there and put pressure. When you play in their backfield, Dan, 67 TFLs. 
four defensive touchdowns, six interceptions. Hey, you know what that is? That's what you call black shirts. I can't even spell it, but that's what it is. They're calling it black shirts. And, and think uh, about that's this. a tradition they like to have. And Gary, think about this. They replaced three players that were selected in the top 40 of the uh, National Football League draft. So they saw some talent head to the uh, pro ranks and uh, was missing in the collegiate ranks. Hey, smart coaches, and Bill Callahan's a smart coach, says, hey, your offense may not be where you want it to be, but you know what? You can still win football games with a great defense. And that's what Kevin Cosgrove is trying to bring to that group. A lot of cohesiveness, a lot of... Uh, Hey, we're a football team, and we're a black shirt tradition, and they've done a great job over them this year. And now they've got 243 to put up another score. That's what's remaining here in our first half. Taylor back to throw all kinds of time. Swings it out left side, and the catch is made. Close to a first down. The grab made by Terrence Nunn. That's a nice throw that time by Zach Taylor. Outside to, to Nunn on the outside, and you see it's a long throw. It's actually about 35 yards he has to throw this football. Nice touch to the outside. You see how far it goes, has a chance for the cornerback if he's, if he's making a good break on the ball to perhaps break that up. He tried to get underneath that throw, but Zach Taylor had a nice delivery on it, enough to get it out there to none. Terrence Nunn, three catches, 31 yards, and a touchdown reception. 10 to 7, Nebraska, with 2.38 to go in our second quarter. Three receivers out wide right, one to the near side, one man in the backfield. That's Corey Ross. Going to change the play here. Play clock down to one, and now flags will fly. A little bit of confusion there, looked like, and Taylor was trying to set the offense, and we've got a penalty. Head ball. Full start. 79. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first half. Cornelius called for that. Well, you got Bill Callahan calling the plays here with his quarterback, Zach Taylor, on the sideline. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, wristband that he's got there it's kind of got a bunch of plays on it got the front page the back page the middle page and gonna work a little bit of everything there <laughs> he's even got a belt pack too look at that that's something new in college football kind of like Batman out there got his belt pack too now it's Taylor flushed out of the pocket but he's got running room to the 35 and brought down at the 37 still got plenty of time here 230 to go it's kind of break down for him. Instead of throwing the ball into coverage, he gets what he can against his Baylor defense. See the pressure from the outside, trying to get uh, back there. Second down and five. Down to the shotgun, Taylor. Pump fakes, cross the middle, first down. Catch is made by Mulkey. First down here, college football. The clock stops till they set the chains, and then I'll go again. Plenty of time here, just under two minutes to go. Mulk is just going to work right there, watch that spot in the middle of the field, and he's going to throw it right there to him. Mulkey with his third reception. Brought down at the 45. It's now first and 10 for the Cornhuskers. Taylor to throw again. Across the middle, was open through behind the intended receiver, Nate Swift. Just a little bit behind. Yeah, that was one that if Swift caught, he was going to run up the field between the safeties, probably for good yardage for the Huskers. Ball just thrown behind him. Baylor had brought the house, and that left the middle wide open. 141 to play, first half. The defense, a well-deserved rest for Nebraska after that first drive by Baylor. They've been outstanding. They really have. They have changed a little bit of what they're doing up front and in the secondary and shut down the running game completely for Baylor. They have not been able to run the ball whatsoever and uh, paid benefits here for this football team. Taylor out of the shotgun. Wide open and stepping out of bounds is Hardy. I mean, wide open. Well, what the Baylor defense is playing is actually called quarters. There's going to be four guys deep. You'll have one here, two, three, and four. Let it run here, and you'll see what happens. He just kind of goes underneath to the outside right there, and nobody there. That's the four-zone deep defense that you have. Kind of a soft defense, but good job, throw, good catch, and that's a play that you want to have on the sideline, out of bounds from your two-minute drill. 137 to play. First and ten, Cornhuskers. The ball on the 42 of Baylor. Shotgun again for Zach Taylor. Underneath, Grand Mulkey again, his fourth reception of this ball game. That's tops and receivers for Nebraska and in this game overall. But the 
you just see they're, they're content getting five to ten yards right down the middle. Yeah, Mulkey, that's impressed man coverage. He got separation. That's pretty impressive for him to be able to get open like that. Taylor again looks right side, and this one is going to be pass interference. And the fans don't like that one bit as James Todd has whistled for that. Now James Todd goes with his inside arm, his right arm, but his left arm is what gets him. On the left side, he's going to be on the receiver. You see the quarterback Taylor throw it out. Watch it here on the left side, his left hand, the contact. Pass That's interference. Good ball. Defense. On the 46. Spot foul. Automatic first down. And again, you can see that left hand on the back of the receiver, so a good call by our official. Well, coaches, coaches, they actually coach him, hey, you've got to have that arm in there to be able to make the tackle, because if you're trying to make a play on that ball with your off hand, hey, you've got to make the play to tackle them. So defensive backs, they tend to put that arm back there. Just a timing thing, and the timing was uh, to the benefit of the offense there. Taylor to throw, flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run to the 20. Inside the 20 goes Zach Taylor diving ahead for Nebraska. And now it's a minute and running on the clock. Pretty efficient here. Going to bring up a short yardage situation. If he'd have got another yard or so, been a first down easily, and the clock would have stopped when they reset the change. But uh, third down, about one second and one to go. Yep, just one yard short. Taylor under center. They're going to throw again. Quick hitter. Almost picked off. And again, pass interference. Anthony Orline is going to be whistled for that. Listen to these fans. Well, Anthony, I feel your pain, but I tell you, it's an official's call out there to make this, and it's going to be contact before the ball gets there. Take a look as Taylor delivers the ball. Our line's going to try to make the play on the ball. Looks like it's simultaneous contact to me, but the back judge who's making that call throw the flag in. Guy Moore is not happy about that whatsoever. Last time these two teams met, it was a year ago. It was a blowout win for Nebraska, 59-27. Tonight, a little different story. It's a tight ball game. Nebraska on top by three, but they're closing in on another score. Taylor looking end zone. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Hardy. Our line on the protection underneath. <laughs> now the Nebraska fans on this end of the stadium, they're not happy about that call. They thought there was some contact with our line in the end zone. Stops the clock with 35 seconds to go. <laughs> 66 yards, two minutes, eight seconds on this current drive, and only eight plays for Bill Callahan and the Cornhuskers. Second and ten. Taylor looking, fires, overshoots his man. He's trying once again to get to Terrence Nunn. Clock is stopped with an even 30 seconds to play. Yeah, put a different package in there defensively that time. Only three down linemen that time rushing. They rushed a linebacker, kind of lined up a bit differently. Still, the Nebraska offensive line had a pretty good shot of it. That's the contact we're talking about. He's going to throw the ball out here, not to be able to make that make that grab though. This ball sailed on him a little bit. Taylor underneath and behind the uh, intended receiver again. He was trying to go for Terrence Nunn. If he leads him, that's six. And that was an, probably an easy throw for a quarterback. The quick little slant to the post. Need to get that ball up. That was not a very good throw by Zach Taylor. This is one he'd like to have back. Got a good vision here. Nobody in the lane of sight there, but the ball is just thrown low and behind and not a catch. 29 yard field goal here. The attempt by Congdon. He's 8 of 11 this season. And the kick is up and it is good and it adds to the Nebraska lead it's 13 7 Cornhuskers yeah, his second field goal on the night Condon so he's been a pretty rock solid performer on the field goal side hasn't kicked any long one just 38 yards is his longest but done a good job for him tonight with a couple of field goals pushing his numbers to 10 on the season and it's 13 7 for Bill Callahan and the Cornhuskers on the road for the first time in 2005 how about that five home games to start your season Five home games. Well, that's what you'd like to have to be at home all the time, but really, you know, <laughs> it's not going to be that way. Uh, 
all the time. You know, I was actually talking to Keith Mann, one of the athletic uh, information specialists for Nebraska the, tonight, and talked about, hey, what's your schedule like next year? He says, hey, we go to U.S. Uh, excuse me, we go to USC. Is that right? Yeah, they're on the schedule next year, so that, that uh, non-conference uh, competition level picks up a little bit. Nebraska will be at Missouri next week, and they've got Oklahoma at Kansas, Kansas State at home, and then at Colorado to finish it up. And with two more wins, they're headed to a bowl game. Yeah, but I think they've got their sights squarely on what they can do in the Big 12 North, where they can fit right there and have a chance to compete. I think that uh, Colorado probably uh, was on the short end of the stick today. I didn't get the final on that yet, but they were losing to Texas earlier today. And, and Gary, uh, that would put them at 2-1. and one. If yeah. Nebraska can win here, they're 2-1. and one. Yeah, that's where they'd want to be is right there in the thick of things. Bill Callahan would be very pleased with his football team if they were able to maintain this uh, his margin here and get this victory. Kansas State, who was ahead of Nebraska to start a play today, lost. They're now one and two in the Big 12 North. Baylor at one and one trails Texas Tech. They won today. They're three and zero. And of course, Texas was taking on Colorado, and Texas is two and zero. And certainly the cream of the crop when you talk about the Big 12. Taken at the 20, it's cut up and knocked out of bounds at the 45 for Baylor. Big return. It gives them a shot at least to. Have a couple of cracks at it. That was Willie Andrews. Well, what it does, it gives them an opportunity to get some players down the field. And this is a squib kick. You want to kick it down there and make a tackle, but good job of return here. Now you have a chance to get field position so you can kick a field goal. Exactly. You're a couple of plays, a couple of outs from uh, being in field goal range. The longest field goal they've had this season 49 yards from Ryan Havens, who arguably has in the, been their biggest surprise this year. Yeah, he's done a good job for him, and now it's Sean Bell's opportunity to use the two-minute drill to move his offense. Underneath, with room, across midfield, still on his feet is Ziegler. Nine seconds on the clock, still got timeouts to use. Moving the chains, so then it'll uh, stop the clock, as you mentioned, Gary, in college football. First down will stop it. They'll back up. The ball will rest on the 40. They've got to get at least 10 to 15 spike. more yards. Yeah, they're going to stop the clock here. Quarterback's going to put it down. To have a great chance at getting the three points. Now the scoreboard says that Baylor has one timeout left. Surprising that they didn't use it there, but uh, looks like they're going to take another shot at it here. You know, I'd like if I were the, was going to use it, I'd use the time out there. You save that two seconds. Go ahead and throw the ball out of bounds on the sideline and get you five or six yards. Help your kicker a little bit. Instead, now you're now you're shortened it up by a couple of seconds. That those couple of seconds may be big here on this play and not be able to stop the clock. But with the timeout left, they do have the ability to throw the ball anywhere on the field instead of just to the sideline. Sean Bell is 11 of 16 tonight. Out of the shotgun. Has to be quick. He is down the sideline. Almost caught. Knocked out of bounds by Grixby. He was looking for Sean Rashawn, and the fans booing now every time there's a pass thrown, and that was a good defensive play. It was a good defensive play, but I think this ball is a little underthrown here by, by Sean Bell. You see the slow down there. Sean Rashawn has to slow down, and that's what allows Grixby to put his hands up into the receiver. That's what you're taught as a defensive back. Watch the receiver. Watch when his hands go up for the football and put yours right in the middle of it. Good chance you'll knock that ball away, and uh, Grixby does a nice job. Now, Terrence Parks has checked in at the quarterback spot for Baylor. Rolls left, Parks unloads deep and out of the end zone. And that's going to be how we end it. And it looks like he's your deep throw quarterback, and uh, he can throw it deep, a little bit too deep. Nonetheless, pretty good effort here, I think, by both teams, uh, Dan, in this football game. We talked about the defenses both playing well, an opportunity to you know, keep their game, their football teams in the ball game. And Nebraska did a good job there in the second quarter. Let's check in with Greg. Greg? All right, Coach Callahan, a little adversity early in the game, but your team seemed to overcome that. You had to be proud of that. Well, I think so. You know, we have to absorb the initial assault. These guys are a good football team, and our defense is starting to come on with a little bit more heat and pressure. And if we can complement our defense and our teams can keep playing well, we're going to be right in it. Good. Good luck second half. Thank you. Go Callahan. All right, Greg Sharp, our man on the sidelines. Thank you. Alongside of Gary Reason, Tom Dan McLaughlin, we're at the half. FSN Big 12 football, Nebraska on the road. Their first road game of the season. And they're on top after falling behind early on. It's 13-7.
Halftime show is coming up next. And we are back in Waco, Texas, where the Baylor Bears at home are trailing Nebraska by the score of 10 to 7, and it's halftime here on FSN. We welcome Mark Bain, executive associate athletic director at Nebraska with us. And uh, I would assume, uh, Mark, you have to be pretty pleased with that first half of action. What a great uh, first half. And uh, the defense really started to pick it up uh, late in the second half. And of course, the offense is uh, starting to roll. Now, this is going to feel a little odd for you. You guys are actually on the road tonight. First time in five <laughs> games. And uh, it feels pretty weird to see the red pants out there. But uh, uh, it's, we, we played very well on the road in the past. And uh, we hopefully we'll continue here in this game to play extremely well. And Gary and I were talking about it. You guys travel so well. And uh, I know your fan base is thrilled to be on the road and have a chance to see some football. You know, it's amazing. I didn't realize we were going to have as many fans as we do in this game. Uh, we have approximately 10,000 fans out there, and uh, what a great tribute. I, I know a lot of them are Texans for Nebraskans out there, and uh, what a great uh, tribute because they're really uh, lifting our team up, uh, especially on defense. So that's that's a great sign. I would assume uh, here in the state of Texas, you've got some big-time Nebraska fans and probably alumni are down here too. A lot of alumni, especially down in the Dallas, San Antonio area, Houston area. They're all over. Uh, I know a lot of fans that are watching tonight are curious about your thoughts of the, the football program, the direction it's going in. How do you feel about it? It's going tremendous. You know, Bill Callahan and, and the coaching staff, uh, they got a group of young players that believe in themselves, and that's a tribute for the last three games I think we've seen where the kids have just lifted up and uh, you can really see the spirit and it's uh, it's it's what I call is hold on tight and take a deep breath. Well this isn't the only program that's doing well at Nebraska. You've got a ladies volleyball team that's uh, doing very very well. Well they're playing tonight. Uh, they're playing Texas in a match and I don't know what the uh, score is right now but uh, they're playing right now and John Cook is doing just a tremendous job and uh, they got one goal in mind and that's to win the national championship and uh, they got some great gals on the team and uh, we're looking forward to it. You draw so well for football. Give fans that aren't familiar with that program how well you guys draw for volleyball. Well we, we sell out every single volleyball match. It's really a tribute to the great fans in the state of Nebraska especially in the Lincoln and Omaha communities where they drive uh, a long ways too uh, from from out in uh, the middle of Nebraska and uh, uh, just a great atmosphere in the Coliseum and uh, it gets loud in there Dan. And it's hard to believe we're already halfway through the football season at least regular season looks like with one or two more wins if you can get this one tonight one more win you're headed to another bowl but uh, you know basketball right around the corner what did you guys do as far as a midnight madness program or at least something to tip off the season. Well last night uh, as you know, said basketball Basketball did start. We had uh, Husker Madness, is what we called it. Seven o'clock in prime time. We had about 3,000 fans there. Just a tremendous atmosphere. And uh, Coach Barry Collier and his staff. Uh, and it, really, it's a new team, Dan. Um, a lot of freshmen, six new faces on the basketball program. And uh, it was quite ex exciting, especially when you got down to the dunk contest. <laughs> and there was a guy, Kyle Marks and Jason DeRusso, went at it in the finals and Jason DeRusso the veteran mm -hmm. uh, won it but what a thrilling uh, dunking contest and great expectations uh, for this men's basketball program. So during these football games do you relax at all. No. I, at least you're I out position, of it. I position I move from one place to another constantly. <laughs> so I found a good spot up here, though. Well, we'll let you go. Go ahead and put down that microphone, and we thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. That's Mark Bain from the University of Nebraska. He is the executive associate athletic director. We'll talk about what's happening here at Baylor when we come back. It's 10 7 at the half. Big 12 college football on FSN. We welcome you back to Waco, Texas, Floyd Casey Stadium, home of the Baylor Bears. Well over 40,000 here tonight, and Nebraska has a lead of 13 to 7. We're at the half. Let's take a look at our first half stats. And Nebraska got off to a little bit of a slow start defensively as Baylor came out with one of their best drives of this season. It was the first drive of this game. First downs in favor of Nebraska. The passing yards pretty much even. Total yardage. Just a difference of 50 yards. Third down conversions have been a story in this game twice now. Two for two Nebraska on fourth down conversions. Penalties four for Nebraska and six against Baylor. Gary Reasons 
rejoins us and uh, let's get your first half thoughts. What'd you think? I think it's a couple of teams that are fairly evenly matched and both of them trying to make some adjustments so far, Dan, in this football game. Nebraska, as you said, started slow defensively. Baylor had a good opening drive. They put a touchdown on the board. Then you take a look at what Nebraska did. They pretty much shut the uh, Baylor offense down for the better part of the second quarter. You could really see, though, in particular in that second quarter, Gary, the fact that Nebraska is really starting to put it together offensively and then their defense picked it up, too. Well, the defense made Baylor go one dimensional. That is, make, make throws through the air, and then they put pressure on the quarterback, and then offensively, Nebraska did what they had. They had good field position with special teams play, and they put points on the board. Well, so they have a lead of 13 to 7. Let's take a look at uh, some of those highlights of our first quarter and our first half, and it started out very well for Baylor. Well, they took the ball down the field. Sean Bell gets the ball into the end zone on the little bootleg pass here. He stretches his arm right across the end line, and that's a touchdown in college football. So Baylor comes out very, very well. But in the second quarter here, Nebraska driving well. Corey Ross fumbles the football. Baylor picks it up and negates one quick drive here by Baylor. But now you get Grixby on the punt return for, for Nebraska, and they set up great field position here. Looks like he's going to go all the way, but Sepulveda, the punter, gets him a little bit and knocks him off his feet, and resulting here for a chance to put points on the board. Then your quarterback hits Terrence Nunn coming across the middle. Zach Tedder with a nice throw and a good conversion there for the touchdown for Nebraska and so they've done pretty well with the field position they've had man and there's no doubt if you're going to win you've got to make adjustments at the half and Baylor's got to do that in particular offensively I think they've just got to be consistent they've got to find some way to run the football take all the pressure off of your quarterback Sean Bell and those receivers and your offensive linemen have to be two dimensional they've got to protect for the quarterback they've also got to be able to run block so they get, need to get a little more of a blended offense offensively for Baylor but I think on the Nebraska side they've also got to do the same thing they've got to be able to run the ball they haven't done a lot of that tonight. Well, we'll uh, take our another time out here on uh, halftime. FSN Big 12 football. We're in Baylor. The Bears at home trailing against Nebraska. It's 13 7. We're at the half at Floyd Casey Stadium in Baylor as Nebraska has a lead of 13 to 7. We're at the half. Big 12 football here on FSN. Gary Reason, Dan McLaughlin, Greg Sharp with you. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard concerning the uh, Big 12 and some games that have a huge impact in particular with the Big 12 North. But uh, let's give you Texas Tech 59 to 20 over Kansas State as they roll. Yeah. Mizzou second year in a row. They have won in overtime against Iowa State and Texas over Colorado. No one uh, expected to Colorado to pull off that upset 42 17. Well, Texas now they are they go to undefeated on the year 5 and 0. Oh. Texas Tech also 5 and 0. Oh. So next week that's going to be a huge game in the Big 12 Conference because those two will meet and it's going to be a good interesting game and Texas A&M with a big win today against Oklahoma State and the Sooners at half. And let's check. Edge. Let's check in with our buddy uh, Greg Sharp who's downstairs. Greg. All right Dan we're here with Guy Morris. Great first drive of the game. Now you need to find some more offense. Yeah we do. We got to get our offensive line settled down and get them working a little bit harder for us and uh, give us some a little more, more time to throw the football. We got guys running wide open down the middle. We can't get the ball to them. Defense playing hard but they've been out there a lot. They have been out there too long. They've, they've been playing well. We just got to stay the course and see if we can create a few more turnovers and get our offense cranking. Good luck taking it. Thank you. All right Greg thank you and our thanks to Guy Morris. We're back with our second half in just a moment. to seven Nebraska on the road their first road game of the season with 11 41 to go third quarter nice 79 yard drive here doing a good job running the football but then they go to the passing game and good job of finding the person that's open so Zach Taylor gets out of the pocket throws it back to the back of the end zone Peterson watches footwork here goes up for the football gets a foot down in the end zone you see the foot right there good job and all you need again Gary is just that one foot down in the college game no doubt about it CJ Wilson back there with him but made a good grab and got that foot down. So Todd Peterson all alone in the back of the end zone picks it up caps off an eight play drive for Nebraska. And Zach Taylor is now 15 to 25 two touchdown passes for 150 yards and Sean Bell and the Baylor Bears gonna have to come back tonight at home. Now that drive was made up uh, Dan, of 58 yards non passing plays 21 yards on the touchdown pass but 58 yards of running the football and the penalties against the Bears. And Andrews lets that one bounce out of bounds so penalty on the play. Some extra activity out there at midfield. 
Well, Baylor's going to get good field position here up over at the 35-yard line where they kick out of bounds. So now it's their chance to put their offense out free there kick, and answer. Free kick. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. On the kick, on the kick. Out of bounds. 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 Loudspeakers are so loud here, he's got to wait. <laughs> that echo comes down to hear, him, hear himself talk. Well, let's see what kind of adjustments Baylor can make, in particular with that offensive line that uh, Guy Morris talked about. 11 of 17 was Bell in the first half, 122 yards, no interceptions. I guess that's the key when you look at those stats. Yeah, no mistakes, but uh, no points on the board either in the passing game. And here comes Nebraska showing blitz. Bell. Checks off very quickly, has a man. It is caught. Ziegler. And Ziegler is close to the first down. He uh, picked it up. So they move the chains, and one pass just like that. First down for Baylor. Yeah, kind of a scissors play to the wide receiver on the outside. One's going to run inside, one's going to run out, and Ziegler, the short man to the flat to the outside. And good throw, good grab. You can see that he picked up the blitz right away, checked off, and made the uh, quick pass, made the adjustment. Three uh, wide receivers to the right side of the field for the Bears. First and ten with the ball on the 47. And Bell wants to hand it off. He does so. And it's cut up near first down. Great second effort by Brandon Whitaker, the sophomore. He's averaging better than five yards of carry, and he's been a little spark plug out of the backfield tonight for Baylor. A little bit over pursuit here. See the linebackers fly by, and that's a good job of cutting the ball back by Whitaker. We talked about the change of pace between Paul Mosley and Whitaker. Whitaker a little quicker back, able to get in behind his linemen, and actually the defensive linebackers for Nebraska run past. That's Bo Reed missing that tackle, getting outside too fast, and Brandon Whitaker cutting underneath. It's two plays and two first downs for the Bears. Sean Bell steps up and fires and overthrows his man. Again, he was looking for Ziegler, who's had a nice night receiving. Ziegler with four catches, 46 yards on the night. Yeah, I think he's one of the more favored receivers that uh, Sean Bell has, but he spread the ball around quite a bit here to all these receivers on this football field. And I like what I've seen with Sean Bell. He's got a good delivery, he's got a good demeanor in the backfield, and he leads that team pretty well. It helps to have some running game to go along with that. Don't put everything on his shoulders. You could see that uh, Nebraska was just trying to unload as they knew there was no running game at the end of that first half. And forcing him out of the pocket time and again. And the handoff went to Whitaker going nowhere lost a couple of yards on the play. I'm not sure that fooled anybody. It was like all the white shirts went right to where the handoff was and pretty quick. Take a look here Whitaker's just going to come in you see the fake this draw run everywhere but look at all the white shirts they're all right there nobody blocks them. This Just tackle made that. by Carriker. Don Morris didn't uh, didn't get his message across to his offensive line, at least not for that play. Adam Carriker with that stop. Second season as a starter for Nebraska. Out of Kenwick, Washington, but grew up in Lincoln. Third down and 13 for the Bears. And they jump. False start, it looks like, against Baylor. Yeah, all the stemming, all the movement by the defensive front here for Nebraska. Move the defensive linemen crowding in on the nose and the linebackers and the safeties coming all up to the line of scrimmage. Number 76. Watch the movement here. Everybody's coming inside here for this Nebraska defense, and the, the Baylor offensive line just reacts a little bit. That's Yancey Bodner, the right guard for the Bears. 6'4", 319 pounds, and you lean backwards a little bit, you got a whole lot to lean. It's tough to stop. I, I think so. Puts him in a hole now, third and 18, and they're right on the 50-yard line. Shotgun, Bell sets up a screen. That's Whitaker, and a good stop defensively. Rude was in there, the first man, and that stopped the progress of Whitaker, the sophomore for Nebraska. And he's third on the team with the 32 tackles. He's had a couple of more here tonight. Watch Bo Rude, number 51, do a good job of getting outside and making a good read on the play. His job is to find that running back out of the backfield. Does a nice, nice job of that. A good play here for his Husker defense. And Barry Turner was there to clean it up. Sepulveda will kick it away from his own 35. Beauty. And let it bounce inside the 10, and it takes a Nebraska bounce, and they'll have it at their own 20. When we come back, 
Cornhuskers on the road lead it 20 to 7. And we're back at Floyd Casey Stadium, 27 Nebraska. Had a chance to visit with Guy Morris, and he says this program is starting to turn around. Quite a few first. We got a few more to go yet, but uh, it has been. We've had a lot of fun with that. We've been talking about getting monkeys off. But I got about six monkeys that my wife bought for each time we accomplished a first this season, and they're all over the place. But uh, it's been a good year. It's been an exciting year. The enthusiasm back in the program. The kids are, are playing well. Their, their energy level's high, and uh, it's getting contagious to the student body and our alumni. And, well, the biggest monkey was last week, finally getting a road victory for Baylor University, 23-13, Gary, at Iowa State. Yeah, it looks like his wife is really boosting the economy, buying those monkeys around here. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime she gets a first uh, accomplished, she's going to buy a monkey to give it to her husband. You like that, huh? I think the shopkeeper must like that a lot. They very well could be undefeated. They lost at Texas A&M. That was in overtime, 16-13. So very well could be 5-0 and heading into this game tonight against Nebraska going nowhere is Ross and he's tied up and you talk about that at Texas A&M football game two times in that blow up ball game early in the game they were inside the Texas A&M five yard line and came away with no points so that was a game they really felt like they had a chance to win that ball game and their defense played well in that game and they have continued to do that throughout this season so that's, there's some you know, bright spots here for Baylor offensively defensively and really is a chemistry of a team with their special teams played, they are starting to believe they can win football games. See Taylor, 15 of 25 here tonight. Wants to throw the football again. All kinds of time. Steps away from the pressure, cuts it up, and he is near a first down. So the pocket collapsed around him, but Taylor could sense it and picked up some yardage on that busted play. Well, I don't think Zach Taylor's going to win any awards for being a real nifty or neat runner out there, but he does what he has to do. The pocket breaks down and comes ahead straight ahead and gets a gets positive yardage here. So it's a first down for Nebraska. Everything's covered up well by the defense for Baylor and the pressure just kind of coming around there on the backside and kind of walking the offensive and defensive line are out of there. And he just tucks it away and goes. And he picked up the first down, so first and ten for the Cornhuskers. They lead it 20 to 7, eight and a half to play in our third quarter. The ball resting on their 30. And off to Ross. Left side. And the tackle made by Airline. Junior from San Antonio, Texas. Also in on that play was Jamal Harper. Let's take a look at Zach Taylor's from Texas. He's been very efficient early in the ball game. He sees the crossing route here, gets Terrence Nunn for the touchdown, and he's thrown the ball, I think, pretty well tonight, Dan. He's hit on target. He's been able to get a, get away from the rush a little bit, and he's had been able to rest, though, because the Baylor defense has been back there, but he's got the throws in there to, when they count. Getting points on the board for his football team, and I think we're leading a pretty good job of running this offense. Trying to find over the middle of uh, Mulkey. He was gunning that in there and uh, missed his man. That's what happens. You go, you go talking about him good things and then he lets one go that he'd probably like to have back. Probably throw he should have been able to make or complete to Mulkey. Well, Gary, I don't think there's any doubt. Watching tape of the first few games of this Nebraska offense, they just did not really click. Now, they were winning games, but they've looked better here tonight. They looked great last week. You know, they've got a chance to really start getting things going. You can see that under Bill Callahan. Yeah, and it's just confidence overall from the offensive line, the running backs, the receivers, and more importantly, the quarterback. The quarterback is the one that makes this West Coast style of offense click, and he's got to be very efficient with the football. Out of the shotgun, Taylor. Oh, almost had his man. They would have had six. That was Terrence Nunn, and he just missed him. Well, that's surprising. That ball was right there. He's right in the middle of the field. He broke away from the defender. Watch on the right side of your screen. You're going to have Terrence Nunn come right into the middle on the big BU there and just outside of his outstretched arm. I'm not sure Terrence Nunn actually saw that ball. It looked like he might have been able to make a diving effort, at least a grab on it. Maybe he saw that ball late and really couldn't adjust. And Nunn has had three catches tonight. And he's mixed in a touchdown as well. So they'll have to punt it away. Will Nebraska? Sam Cook to punt. And boots it away. Drives it deep for Rashawn. Fields it at his own 15. Sean Rashawn, he's an exciting player. Crossed the 25 and brought down 
near the 30 yard line. That's where Baylor will take over first and 10. Now you talk about special teams and you know they've got a pretty good weapon on their own with Cook there punting that football doing a good job of getting it down the field and, and then the punt return team for Baylor Rashawn bringing it back. So those are things that both teams have emphasized you know, being able to flip the field so to speak with your punt game when you have to and that's pretty good pretty good effort there. 20 to 7 Nebraska with 721 to go. In our third quarter of play we're at uh, Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. Gary reasons alongside Dan McLaughlin with you Greg Sharp down on the sidelines. Baylor will start in their own 30 yard line. Sean Bell tonight is 13 of 20. They send a man in motion out of the shotgun. Bell a little play action rolls right not much time to throw the football gets it away but great defensive play by Grixby and boy he's had a heck of a game tonight. Grixby has done a good job in the punt return game and also defensively one of the cornerbacks here just a sophomore from Omaha doing a good job in coverage and this is how you draw it up you want to get into a trail technique position and then make a play on the ball with your inside arm he makes that very nicely and that's just good anticipation of the ball coming out of the quarterback's hand and stepping up and seeing the throw and putting his right hand right on the football and negating that catch opportunity. Grigsby, of course, had that wonderful return to set up a touchdown for Nebraska and give them a lead they have not relinquished. They pitch it left side to Whitaker. Boy, he's got some speed. Near midfield, Brandon Whitaker. Well, gets it John with Muhammad. Yeah, first time that Baylor runs the option play here, kind of a pitch. You take your defensive end up the field. We'll take a look at it here. You watch on the right side. Just hold it right there, and you see the pitch and your tailback. They got him to come commit up the field, and then Whitaker with the speed is going to go all the way down the sideline. Go ahead and let it go, guys. And good job of using your speedy tailback to get outside the first down here for your football team. It's now 17 rushes for Baylor. Take a guess how many yards? 15 on the night. Trying to set up that middle screen to Dominic Ziegler, and uh, that'll bring up a second down and ten. Yeah, that wide receiver screen is popular in college football. Baylor's run it once uh, with success tonight. Now trying to run it all, all the way to the inside with the offensive line linemen were there at. Ziegler bringing him from the outside in, and that's not easy to work sometimes because those defensive linemen they don't always get out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> it Sean, happens sometimes. Yeah, Sean Bell said, "Hey, wait, wait, these big guys are here. They're not going anywhere." <laughs> Second down 10 for Baylor. Ball on the 48. Bell rolling right. Looks right sideline. Caught. To the 25. To the 20. Still on his feet. 10. 5. It is close to a touchdown. He's down at the 1. Trent Shelton. There's a fumble. Yeah, but it's going to be called down. He made he made contact with the ball on the ground in in a I tackling think they're position. Say he's down at the one before yeah, anything. He's definitely Gary. down at the one. But Trent Shelton, what he does here is he avoids the tackle. Now the Nebraska defense, after he catches the football, instead of tackling him for you know just the gain of the throw, they're trying to pull the ball out, and so he breaks out of those arm grabs and. Side here, Trent Shelton's going to set them short a little bit, come back, get the football. Now, watching Nebraska defense trying to tackle the ball out, both defenders are not going to get the football, and Shelton runs right away from him. 51 yard pickup. Terrific second effort by Shelton, the junior, out of Fort Worth, Texas. Ball on the one for Baylor. And now it looks like Sean Bell wants a, a timeout. And Shelton may have been hurt at the end of that play. Yeah, he banged pretty good at the end of that play. And look at the numbers he's had on the night. Three catches, to 64 yards. Let's take a look here at the action here. He breaks the tackles here. They're trying to pull the football out, both of them, and they're not getting any success with it. Now watch at the end of the play here. See if he's down. He makes it into the end zone, or it is a fumble. See the hat on the ball? Oh. I'm surprised. That, that might actually be a fumble. Gary, that is a fumble. Yeah, he, he loses control of it. Looks like when Shelton's in the air, Looks like Blake Titke does hit him at the end there. Titke puts the ball helmet right on the football, and he's in the air. He has lost control of that football. Absolutely. Initially looking at it, I thought there was no question that he would be whistled down at the one-yard yeah. line, but then our replay show from our great camera crew that 
The ball was clearly out, and that should have been a fumble. Yeah, I don't know if this is being replayed for the officials here. Big re replay in the Big 12 this season for all the home games. I don't, I don't know if they've been buzzed or not on the field yet. If they do, then uh, the officials. Yeah, it looks like they are reviewing it. And I don't think Baylor fans are going to be happy with the outcome of this because it looks like, in my estimation, that Trent Shelton, when he gets down inside the five-yard line trying to dive in, Titke still efforting, trying to put his hat right on the ball, and he does. It comes loose. I don't think that Shelton has control of it. He does not find the ball again. Now, who, who comes up with the football in the end zone? That's going to be the question here if it is a resulting Cause fumble, even a turnover here. And Gary, let me ask you too: Did Baylor call the timeout, or was the timeout called by the officials? If Baylor called the timeout there, they just cost themselves. Well, Baylor did call the timeout, and you got players scrambling in the end zone here. And I'm not sure that they even noticed who who picked up the football here at the end. Going to be interesting to see how well they how they officiate this whatsoever. I don't know who they're going to give the ball to is my the, point. Dan. Exactly. I, I, I think it, I think it's clearly a fumble and it goes into the end zone. But I don't think they really worried about the pile because they called him down. And some of the players it looked like it even stopped. Now it's, if it's down by contact that's official call on the field. So let's take a look at the pile at the back of the end zone here. Let's see what we can come up with and who has the football. See the couple of Huskers get in there on top of it. And it very well could be a Baylor touchdown. Well, it might have been Daniel Bullets right on top of the football. Now this line judge coming in, I don't know that he's even worried about who's got the ball or not. And that's rude in there trying to get it. If they go with this replay, well, there's this Bullock, be so a there, There's a Baylor player right down there at exactly. the bottom as well. So who's got the ball? Daniel Bullock comes out of there like he's got the strongest hands. <laughs> he's got the ball. <laughs> Trent Shelton obviously hurt there on the play, grabbing his wrist. See our review time is nearing two minutes. It's 20 to seven. Nebraska Baylor gets the score. This would be huge. Even if they get the ball back, it's huge because then the ball is resting on the one yard line and a chance to punch it in and they're right back in the game. I think they're they probably just don't know who got the ball in the end zone. I think that the last thing that they called on the field was down at inside the one yard line. Probably are going to have to stay with that call. I don't think they're going to be able to give it to Nebraska. I don't think they're going to give Baylor a touchdown because I don't think they officiated who came up with the football at the end of that that, that scrum in the end zone. I think we're both in agreement, though. Clearly, it yeah. was a fumble. Yeah, it came out. He did not have control of it. Tipke. Now, the next question is, once we decipher that it was a fumble, is to figure out who's got possession of the football. And watching our replay, it was tough to tell. Yeah, our TV guys in the truck are telling us that they're feeding, feeding some replay to the replay booth to find out who has possession of this football. And it's hard to determine. You've got uh, Bullock's down there at the bottom, and I didn't see the Baylor player who came in on the right side, and he's down there at the very, very bottom. And it's just a matter of who's going to hold out the strongest, be the longest to hold on to that football. And now, normally, it looks you like have... Bullock's is pulling the ball out from underneath the Baylor player at the bottom at the end of this. See him strip it out from underneath him. Right, and Gary, normally you'd have that line judge in there instantaneously pulling guys off. And you see these the officials on the field; they're not trying to make a judgment whatsoever on that. After reviewing the last play. The ball came out at the one foot line. There was a simultaneous recovery in the end zone. Therefore, touchdown. Well, there you go. A huge play in favor of the Baylor Bears, and their crowd erupts. Well, that's simultaneous. Well, that's a new one on me, but that's the way they've officiated here because, really, there's no fair way to do that. Wow, that's an interesting, interesting way to I don't know if you flip a coin, what do you do? Who do you give it to back there? I'll tell you what, in watching our replay, I thought that Baylor did have it at the bottom of the pile, but then Bullock's yeah, obviously the very, had it at the at very, the very end, end. He pulled it out. So it probably is a result net touchdown here for Baylor. It's obviously going to be that. That's how it's been called. And, you know, as you talked about, Dan, Baylor goes up to the line of scrimmage with a chance to snap that ball, but they called timeout. But that was the only reason why this play was even reviewed. Now, there was a chance that they could have lost the review, but it's resulting now in a score for them. And, Gary, the last thing you want to see is with an instant replay is to still have a discussion as to whether or not who's got the ball is it a touchdown it should be clearly had with that uh, replay but that wasn't the case Havens on to attempt the extra point botched the snap 
It's a loose football. And it's going to be a 2013 lead for Nebraska with 619 to play here in our third quarter. So Baylor with these penalties and misplays has just shot themselves in the foot. Offside. Defense. <laughs> I don't see a flag. I don't either. Oh, it is in the back of the end zone. In the end zone, by the, to the left of the B. Correct. In the end zone, a oh, little flag back there. None of us can actually see it. So, take a look at the, the right side of the of the Baylor line. Excuse me, the Nebraska. You see the stunt move up there? That's what it was. Got in the neutral zone. And the Bears get a second chance. They say thank you very much. Crazy couple of minutes here. Well, the instant replay and then the bot snap on the extra point, which normally that's just automatic. Well, now that's Sepulveda. Now remember, remember he fell and made a tackle. He's the holder on the on the. But no yard there will be a retry from the three. Now Sepulveda on a tackle that he had to make on Grixby on that punt return may have hurt his hand, his shoulder. We don't know. He came off the field grimacing, so I wonder if that snap, something that uh, really he wasn't prepared to go up and get, and might be having some kind of an upper arm injury. And that one is good and makes it a six point Cornhusker lead. It's now 2014 as Havens has been perfect this season with extra points. What a story he is. He had not kicked a field goal or a PAT in college game prior to this season. And he may be Baylor's biggest surprise. Let's go downstairs. Greg Sharp, what did you see? A couple of observations. The Baylor timeout actually leads to a Baylor touchdown because if they snap it and don't take that timeout, they would have had to earn that extra half yard for the touchdown. And Dan, you're a big baseball guy. Would simultaneous possession be like a tie goes to the runner? Well, you know what? We already had enough problems with called third strikes. I don't even want to go down that road. <laughs> And by the way, Bill Callahan is from Chicago and a huge White Sox fan. Yeah. yeah. Head coach of the uh, Corn Huskers. So Nebraska now a lead of 20 to 14. Let's go back to Zach Taylor running the uh, show for the Corn Huskers, and he's saying that this offense is starting to click. Well, I think with every practice we get better, and <clears throat> it's obvious that the offense is really starting to click with one another, and we have a lot of confidence in what we're doing, and so. Um, you know, we just we're just becoming more familiar with the plays and what uh, the coach is trying to just do. So it's leading to a lot of success right now. The drive to start this uh, second half with a touchdown, and Zach Taylor tonight carries 15 to 27, 150 yards, two touchdowns, and uh, no interceptions. He's looked very solid. Yeah, the thing that he mentioned was confidence. You know, when you have confidence in what you're doing. You rely on your other players on the team. You don't have to do it all yourself. You have confidence that your offensive line is going to work, your running backs, your receivers. All that plays together, and if you understand what's going on, you start learning that offense, and you become productive. So the kick is away. This one is fielded in the end zone, out to the 15 to the 20. Big hit down there. Tier Green, along with Lucky, down there for Nebraska. And they will uh, take over first and 10. Tonight's attendance, 40,857, the largest since last year's Texas A&M game. So finally a team from out of the state of Texas, and they get over 40,000 here tonight. And interesting to see what Bill Bradley, the defensive coordinator for Baylor, is going to do to adjust. Remember last drive out, Nebraska took the ball down the field, ran the football very effectively against the Bear defense. Let's see how they combat that right now. As you mentioned, Gary, the running game was pivotal in that first drive for him. They go back to the run. It's to the 25, and I believe that was Corey Ross on the carry. Yeah, nine players up around the line of scrimmage for Baylor's defense, but a good job of just setting the pace there and coming backside and getting a few yards there in, in, in behind his offensive lineman. Well, you have to go back to 1996 when Oregon State was uh, here in Baylor, in which they had a bigger crowd than tonight with a team that was outside the state of Texas. So some folks are starting to believe. Getting excited about this program. Second down and six. 2014 Nebraska. Taylor to throw the football. Swings it out. Almost picked off. And it's a catch, it looks like. Yes, it is. Terrence Nunn. With another reception, that was almost picked off and taken to the house. Well, this is outstanding concentration by Terrence Nunn, number 83. When he catches his football, it's, there's a Baylor player right in front of him, goes right through his hands. 
That's C.J. Wilson, the quarterback, stepping up there, and he should be taking this the other way. Goes, oh, goes right over his head. Wow. <laughs> look, at, look at that, trying to hold his feet. And it's a first down for Nebraska. First and 10, the ball on the 36. This crowd is right back in it. Taylor back to throw, senses pressure, and gets it away. The pressure from M.T. Robinson there. Along with Jamal Harper, fifth-year senior out of Dallas, Texas. The big Michael Gary was trying to huff and puff and get around there to get in number 92 for the Baylor defense. And he's going to come around the backside. You see number 92, Gary. Watch him go right here and get all the way around there. I'm almost there, but I can't get there. I thought he had a pretty good move with the line of scrimmage. Quarterback left. Second and ten. Taylor will check off with his back. Caught by Ross. Heck of a catch. May have lost a yard though on the play. You know, they have not gotten Corey Ross really involved in the offense here tonight, whether it be via the ground or he's such a threat out of the backfield. But to Gary, they really haven't gotten him going. I think what they've done on defense, Bill Bradley has put somebody, whoever which way Corey Ross goes out of the backfield, we're going to have a linebacker slide out there and be in near proximity of him or a defensive back. He just didn't pull that ball in very well that time. Ball was bobbled. And he hasn't caught a ball cleanly all night where he can make some run, you know, make some yards running the football. It's the loudest this crowd has been tonight. Third and ten for Nebraska. Taylor from the shotgun. Cuts it up. They're going to have to kick it away. Now Marcus Foreman does a nice job of coming and retreating off the block when the quarterback steps up in the pocket and you're a defensive end what you're taught to do is you're going to have to come back he comes up the field and watch him work back underneath to get the quarterback that's Foreman doing a good job he's not getting the quarterback around the around the corner so he takes underneath route to get him as he steps up in the pocket see all red was in on the play at the very end and all of a sudden the momentum in this game is starting to shift towards Baylor's direction Nebraska to kick it away. Rashawn back deep to receive at his own 25, cuts it up, then cuts it outside and got upended. And a late flag, it looks like, came flying in on the play. And Rashawn made a little bit of something out of nothing. I thought he actually was about ready to call a fair catch, and I think the Nebraska players felt so also. I sure did, too. Gave him a little time there to catch that football. You see it here from the end zone. Oh, good block at the end right there. And then there's, I don't know where the flag comes in at. Illegal block in the back. On the return of the team, number 32, 10 yard penalty from the spot around foul, first down. It's Dwayne Crawford called for that infraction. So with 3.49 to go, Baylor will have the football first and 10 deep in their own territory, ball resting on the 21. I don't see Dwayne Crawford in our screen there making a block. Sean Bell tonight, 14 of 23, one touchdown, 184 yards. And a penalty has been the plague here for Baylor, 75 yards, 10 times the flags have come out against him. First touch of the second half of Paul Mosley, the junior. Fans are saying that that ball popped out along with the Nebraska defense. Now they're right down there where the Nebraska fans are on this end of the field, so they're. <laughs> They're going to root and holler and say, hey, hey, our guys pulled that out. We want that football. Not going to give it to him, though. Paul Mosley got stopped here right at the line of scrimmage and uh, nowhere to go, so probably a good call here by the officials. And the fans over there on the uh, Nebraska sidelines, you saw it on the Jumbotron here at Baylor, and they couldn't believe the call. They thought that was a fumble. Second down and nine. Bell. Swings it out right side. This is Whitaker. Loses yards on the play. Well, Jay Moore saw that from the start. He took one step in. Defensive offensive tackle went outside, and Jay Moore just went right with the running back. He saw the tailback. Is that Whitaker going outside? He's going to flare up right here and watch Jay Moore come from the inside out and do a good job from his defensive end spot of taking this play away right before it started. Jay Moore out of Elkhorn, Nebraska, 6'4 junior. 
Part time starter a year ago, now a full time starter for that Nebraska D. Two and a half to go, third quarter, third down and 13. Bell rolling left with time. Looking, tucks it up. Can't find anybody to throw it to and just shuffles it out of bounds. Actually, I think they're going to call him out of bounds prior to the ball leaving his hand, so he's going to be called out of bounds at the 13 yard line, and that's a loss on the play. Great defensive stand that time by Nebraska. Whenever you run a quarterback to his left, this is what happens. Sean Bell does not have the ability to just throw the football, get squared up, and throw it down the field. So good job by the Nebraska defense. The pursuit just stayed after him and didn't allow him to square up and throw the ball down to a receiver. And here the Nebraska faithful. The ball went out for the second time, punting out of his own end zone. The lefty gets away another beauty. And it'll be fielded and fumbled at the 36. Loose football. Who's got it? It's still loose. Nebraska says that they have it. The pile up underneath the defense is coming on for Baylor and Nebraska's got it finally a signal Nebraska football Courtney Grixby lost it then got it back. Well this ball had opportunity for both teams after it came out of Grixby's uh, grasp ball goes to the ground and both teams actually Dan I thought had a chance to get this football and Grixby seeing the ball goes through his arms and through his legs he's looking behind he's lost ball was kicked. Goes to the middle of the field, and there's Grixby trying to get back on it, and he may have, he may have actually gotten it. 203 to go in our third quarter. 2014, Nebraska with the lead. You see, Grixby was able to get that football, and of course, uh, it's our guys in the truck like to point out. It is, yes, indeed, a full moon here tonight. And the handoff will go to Cody Glenn. We've seen Glenn carry the football a little bit more than we thought here tonight. Yeah, he's carried the ball. He's a big heavy load inside. That's what Nebraska's done. Came out in the first drive of the second half, and they ran the ball very well. Baylor came out. They answered. A little adjustment there. They stopped him the second time, and now they got their third possession here in the second half. Second and eight for the Cornhuskers. Out near the 45 goes Corey Ross. And a late flag on that play, too. Corey Ross is saying face mask, face mask. The line judge on the near sideline is one who throws the penalty flag. Face mask. Five yard penalty. From the end of the run, we'll give him a first half. Gary, that's the 11th penalty against Baylor, and it's cost them 82 yards here tonight. And Corey Ross going through there, and said Harper, number 16, got his on face mask there. And right at the end, it was couldn't see number 30. It wasn't Harper. Harper was in there early, but it was they called it at the end. Number 30, I didn't see the last number on the jersey. 108 and counting here in the third quarter, and a pitch. To Corey Ross, he cuts it up across midfield. And close to a first down, he's going to be a couple yards short, but now they are in Baylor territory. Under a minute to play, third quarter. Well, you want to get your offensive lineman out and running, and Nebraska's doing a good job here, guys. Watch him get, watch the good space they get to come around. He got the two yards leading, but Corey Ross, with his quickness and speed and vision, he sees a cutback lane, takes it straight up, north and south run, and doing a good job getting yardage. And, Sometimes the back makes those cuts and doesn't stay with his offensive line. Still waiting for him to bust one. 16 carries for 59 yards. Second down, two to go. Ross again has the first down for Nebraska. And that should do it for our third quarter of play. The chains will move. We've got 19 seconds. So 19 seconds and Nebraska looks like they're going to be content just to let the clock run down and we'll have our fourth quarter of play. Ah! 
This game has been fun to watch. As Baylor trying to continue their turnaround season here at home with a crowd of over 40,000. Hanging in there with perennial power Nebraska here tonight. It's 2014 Cornhuskers. Big 12 football on FSN. Waco, Texas. Look at Baylor University. The Bears down 2014. Absolutely gorgeous night for football. Gary Reasons alongside Dan McLaughlin with you. Greg Sharp down on the sidelines and uh, fourth quarter now ready to start. Partner, we've got a football game here. Yeah, it really is. It's a good contest. We talked about it coming in here that a couple of teams have really have improved their level of play from a year ago and Baylor trying to get the six wins, thinking they can possibly get to a bowl game this season. Nebraska looking to get in position to win that Big 12 North uh, championship. So a couple of teams here with uh, something riding on this ball game. Ball on the 38, first and 10 for the Cornhuskers. And that's Corey Ross brought down near the 35. I'll tell you one thing this game has been, Dan, it's been a very physical game. Inside, the offensive and defensive line play has been, been physical. The linebackers of both both teams have stepped up, and some of these safeties, they come in and they just lay some pretty good hits on there. There's some sore guys at the end of this one. Ross with a pickup of three, 18 carries for 66 yards, and Nebraska Gary's really gone to that running game here in the second half. Yeah, nothing wrong with going with that. If it's going to be what's going to work for you and get some yardage that way, if you can wear out that opponent, go ahead and do it. And Taylor hands it off to Ross. He's across the 30. Yeah, I don't think that Ross actually got the handle on that right like he would like to. If you see his arms on that, his arms were down. He didn't have a pocket. If we take a look at the exchange here from the quarterback, Zach Taylor, to him, take a look at Corey Ross on the right side. He's got to make a pocket. Watch his left arm. Does his left arm go up or does his left arm go down? He does make the pocket, but the reach by Taylor doesn't put it all the way in there. So Corey Ross just kind of got a hesitation there before he took off. Big old number 65 down there. The left guard for Nebraska's Greg Austin. And he had an IV in him during halftime and uh, a portion of the third quarter was on the sidelines for Nebraska, but he's back in there. Ford Huskers trying to add to their lead. Third and in inches. And every time they've needed to get to that uh, first down marker, the short down plays, they've gone to Cody Glenn, and he picks up another first down for Nebraska. Yeah, Cody Glenn had a couple of short rushing touchdowns a week ago. First two rushing touchdowns of his career, and here in this ball game on fourth and short a couple of times, and now on third and short, gets a first down for his football team. Just power running. You just run downhill, get behind that fullback. He takes on all red, and just you sometimes you got to make it on your own. Doesn't get a whole lot this time, but gets a, a yard or so to get that first down. First and 10, ball on the 26 for Nebraska. Taylor again hands it off to Ross right side. Well, I'll tell you, the Nebraska offensive line, Dan, I think is really starting to take over this football game. When you can push the defensive lineman back three or four yards, it is impressive. And now Nebraska's offensive linemen are doing just that. Take a look at this right side of the offensive line. See the push that they get right there, hat on hat. And look at Corey Ross, a little indecision because, hey, there's so much hole there. Where do I stop and start? Good job by the big offensive line, making room for their running game. And talking with the guy Morris, he thought this game would be won or lost with the guys in the trenches. Well, right now, like you said, Gary, it's Nebraska winning that battle. Second and seven. And this time it's Marlon Lucky. And somebody lost their hat down there. Under 12 and a half to go. Brings up another third down and about five to go for the Cornhuskers. It's through Matthew Thomas on the left side. The hat comes off and he just keeps playing, keeps blocking, trying to get his pancake. I think he just wants a television FaceTime is what he wants. There you go. <laughs> now you can appreciate that. Oh, you always want to as a player down there. You never want to be recognized. Big offensive lineman doesn't always get that. Let's see if Nebraska wants to uh, put it up in the air. They haven't done much of that. Here in the second half, Taylor to throw with time, has a man, oh. and it's caught. And what a stick on the play at the very end. Lidstrom with a huge hit, but the catch was made one-handed by Terrence Nunn. A huge first down for the Cornhuskers. And this is actually the same play that uh, Nebraska scored on a touchdown earlier in the ball game, but they just flipped the play. This time, Nunn comes from the right side of the screen. Watch him cross there. 
Zach Taylor throws it to his backside, one-handed grab, and I watch his lick. Gary, I actually think that was deflected, too, before none caught it. It may have helped out right there, deflected, and then it gave him a chance to even reach back a little bit further and get it. First and ten. Big first down for Nebraska. Again, on the ground, cutting it up is Marlon Lucky. And he's down close to the ten yard line. Dan, as a defensive player, when you're out there on the field, there's nothing worse than having a feeling of, we can't stop the run. Because when you can't stop the run, you realize they're not going to stop running the football. And it's just a, a helpless feeling. And I sense that Baylor's defensive front right now is feeling that Nebraska is going to run this football, and we don't have an answer for it. Lucky in the backfield. Two tight ends set. It's Lucky getting the call again, close to a first down across the 10 yard line. You know, sometimes it's a pride thing for the offensive lineman when you go out there, hey, we're going to take control of this football game. We're big, we're strong. We're going to outman this defensive front here for Baylor. And they've got a little more size, they've got a little more pop. Just take, take over in this football game and run the football. The big guys here for Nebraska right now slowly wearing out that Baylor defensive front. Look at the time of this drive. Impressive taking six minutes off the clock. This is the 13th play of this drive. Chance at another third down conversion. They've been very effective on these tonight. Ross dives across the five and he's close to a first down. I think they're going to spot it just short here. He got just across the five yard line inside the five. Going to bring up a fourth and short. Stay inside on that. He'd have had an easy first down, but he let to go outside that block. Going to bring on the field goal team here to put points on the board. Fourth and short. Surprising that Bill Callahan's been very successful on fourth and ones a couple of times in this ball game. And third and short, they haven't, Baylor hadn't stopped him yet. I guess being content with a close ball game to get three points up there. Condon on for the field goal. 22 yarder is up and it is through. So now it is a two score, two possession game if you're Baylor. Methodic drive that time by Bill Callahan's Nebraska Cornhuskers. They have a lead of 23 14 as we step aside. Floyd Casey Stadium, welcome back. 23 14, Nebraska, they're faithful. Excited about uh, that last drive. I'll tell you what, Gary, that was uh, as good a drive that Nebraska has put together because they took away so much time off the clock. 7.42, 14 plays, 56 yards, and it was run after run after run. Yeah, they just kept pounding at the Baylor defense, and as I've talked about, you just, as a defense, you've got to take care of the run. If you can't stop it, it's almost a helpless feeling out there. So Bill Callahan decided, okay, let's go away from the passing game. We don't have to utilize our quarterback, Zach Taylor, to win this game for us. Let's use it, use our big offensive line and run that football. And it seems to be wearing down the Baylor front. 9.21 to go. Nebraska to kick it away. And that one will roll again out of bounds. So another penalty against Nebraska. And uh, Baylor will get fairly good field position once again. That's the last thing you want. If you're a Dykes in uh, Nebraska, you don't want to kick that thing out of bounds. Now you want it to squib down there and you want them to pick it up, but you don't want to have any rhythm picking that ball up. But again here, Baylor's going to get the ball to the 35 yard line. We talked about time possession being a key in this game. Well, Nebraska with that drive that was seven plus has now racked up 30 minutes and 37 seconds time possession. And look at uh, who's coming in now. It's going to be Terrence Parks. And we saw him the last play of the first half, and he is a deep threat as far as throwing the football. Well, I'm not sure that Terrence Parks, you know, that Sean Bell has played himself out of this game. He didn't play that that badly. They're just trying to get a change of pace or maybe, you know, use some running skills with Parks or throwing the ball. Just a change up. I don't see where Sean Bell has, you know, been that inefficient tonight. He's thrown the ball very well. His receivers have caught the ball, but just overall, you know, you can't put it all on the quarterback to make you win football games throwing the ball because if you can't run the ball at all, then the Nebraska defense, as they have tonight, can put pressure on their quarterback and make it tough for you to operate.
Terrence Parks, 6'4, 243 pounds, and he's a quarterback. Only a sophomore wants to throw the football, a little middle screen, and it's set up. Near midfield is Dominic Ziegler, and he's had a nice ball game tonight. Well, that's the third time they run this play, and this time they work it to perfection. You bring Ziegler from the outside, and he comes inside. Terrence Parks, it's the old slip screen. You can have Ziegler come here and throw the ball right there to him. Offensive line, step one, two, and then release. Get it behind those big guys, and it's a nice uh, result in first down for the Bears. Five catches for Ziegler, 57 yards, tops four Bears. We'd love to see it for them if they could get a quick score and go back on defense and try to stop that Nebraska offense and that running attack. Huge hole and a first down for Paul Mosley, the junior. And here comes the Baylor Bears. Well, the, the linebackers watch the flow. They go front side here. There's nobody back door. That's what Paul Mosley sees. He brings the back side. He just runs clean onto the free safety. Trying to have Blake Kipke having to make a tackle on him and kind of get up a little size there at 5'10". And Big Paul Mosey, 6'3", 225 pounder coming at you. Baylor rushing for his five games. Nearly 150 yards per game tonight. Only 25. That's it. So Parks will work out of the shotgun. Terrence Parks lofting left side. And just out of the reach of the intended receiver, Sean Rashawn. Yeah, I think Sean Rashawn didn't think that Terrence Parks was going to lay this ball out there to him. And he kind of looked back and we slowed up a little bit. Terrence Parks just got a great arm, and we saw that early in the first half, throwing the ball deep, just throws it out there. Not really any contact by the defender. Sean Rashawn walking back kind of slowly after this play. Actually coming out of the ball game here, you see his, looks like his right part of his lower leg there's got some type of a wrap on it. And Rashawn came in as their uh, top wide receiver as far as most catches this season. He's been quiet tonight. And this is an illegal formation if they call it. They don't call it. No flag. And the catch made for a first down, but then fumbled by Dominic Ziegler. Going the other way is Grixby. Across midfield and down inside the 40 for Nebraska. Grixby, a couple of huge plays tonight. None bigger than that one with 7.41 to play. Now they're going to call him Mr. Big Play for this football game. Grixby coming up with a Big kick return early in this ball game. Now this fumble recovery here doing a good job of just making up yardage for his football team. Talked about it being an illegal formation. The tight end was covered, which is what I saw, and Ziegler trying to make something happen after the catch, and ball pops out. That was Adam Ickes with the hit that initially caused the fumble, and then Courtney Grixby was there to pick it up. That was the strip right there on the tackle. And Grixby was off to the races. And of course, he's had that big return that set up a touchdown for Nebraska to give them their first lead that they have not relinquished tonight. And that's something that Baylor has done this year. They have not necessarily been giving up turnovers, and they're having that turnover bug bite them a little bit tonight. First and 10, they're going to stay on the ground, and why not? They are just pounding the football right now. This looks like the old Nebraska offense as Ross picks up a couple for the Cornhuskers. Seven and a half to play, and Baylor, some way, somehow, has got to get a stop and get the ball back. They've got to slow that offense down. It's not too bad. You only allow a yard and a half, almost two, on first down. You can make that offense go back there and do something on second down. You want to get into a third down situation where you can win. That's what, you're, what Bill Bradley would have to tell his defensive players. Let's get these guys to third down. Let's win third down, and we get the ball back. <laughs> throw the football, tucking it up. And Zach Taylor picks up a couple on the play, and here we go with another big third down for the Cornhuskers. Under seven minutes to go in this ballgame. Gary with the stop. Fifth year senior from San Antonio, Texas. And Michael Gary doesn't come around the edge, but he's fighting in the middle there, and then finally he sees the quarterback Ron Taylor, and he gets off the block and makes a nice quick recovery so that uh, Zach Taylor does get the yard. He's got about a yard on that play. Third and eight for Nebraska. And a timeout call. So the Cornhuskers want to talk it over with third and eight. When we come back, they're on top 23-14. 6.26 to go here in Baylor. We welcome you back to Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. Gary Reasons alongside Dan McLaughlin with you on the sidelines. Greg Sharp. 
We've had a good ball game here tonight. 23-14 in favor of the Cornhuskers. That's been a good ball game. It's just uh, one of these games right now that Nebraska came out and they have dominated the line of scrimmage here in the second half and been able to establish a running game. And it's not that old West Coast style of offense you would think this you're going to see, but uh, they're running the ball real well. Spend a time out. They've got third and eight. What do you expect here, uh, Gary? Well, see that the series record 8-1-0 in favor of the Cornhuskers. I think the thing that Nebraska has to do here is if you're going to run, throw the football, you're going to roll the quarterback out of the pocket. I think that would be what they would do. The quarterback has to understand, hey, don't throw it out there where, where uh, Baylor can make an interception here. You want to be smart with the football. And if there's not a play there, throw the ball away. It's okay to punt. Let's go ahead and pin these guys back there. Baylor needs a stop. Taylor rolling left, trying to find help, lofts it. Out of bounds. So the pressure was there. Jamal Harper giving pressure to Zach Taylor. So Nebraska will have to punt it away. And as you talked about, two very great, great punters in the, this ball game. So it's going to be up to Sam Cook to pin that to Baylor offense deep. Well, Zach Taylor does what I talked about. You know, you get out of the pocket, be smart with the football. Nothing there. Just throw the ball away. Bring up fourth down. It's okay to put your punter on the field and pin this offense back of Baylor's and make them go the long field. So Cook the senior from Nebraska has been averaging 44 yards a punt. We'll kick it away. It's going to bounce inside oh. the five and takes a beautiful bounce for Nebraska and they are going to pin Baylor deep. Well, we talked about it at the very start of this ball game, Gary how special teams and in particular these punters can make a difference. Well there you go. That's case in point. Oh, that ball actually spun and back up. Now, that's an amazing way of controlling the ball if he does. And it's kind of like your golf game, Dan. You got that, that little, little off wedge where you can pull that ball back. I, I felt that was either my 56 or my 60 degree. <laughs> yeah, the first touch was at the five yard line, so they're going to bring the ball back there. And Grixby, he's had a heck of a ball game in here with both kick returns and also on the defensive side. And, you know, he's been a spark for this football team for Nebraska tonight. You see early in the ball game here, the the punt return that he has that sets up a score here for Nebraska. A lot of bright future for I think for this young man and then playing in the secondary as a cornerback. You can break on the football and make plays and do a good job in the secondary being opportunistic and picking up the ball and getting yardage for it. He knows what to do with it when he's got the ball in his hands and his teammates certainly appreciate it. Under six minutes to play, 23-14. That first play went uh, for about eight yards, nearly nine. They're going to call it second and one. And Baylor really can't waste any time here. They're going to get these plays in and get things going. Yeah, they need to give it a score down here. They've got plenty of time to work with, but they have to be efficient with the clock. There's no need to go back to the huddle and be very slow about your operation. And bouncing it outside. Is Brandon Whitaker, and he's knocked out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock. So they pick up the first down. They're not pinned back anymore in their own territory, and they stop the clock. Well, if you're a big quarterback, you can block here. Big Terrence Clarks, you know, 6'4", 200, almost 50 pounds. Okay, we'll fake right here. Now we'll block around the outside. Just going to get a hat on a hat here and drive the defensive back back out of the way. Hey, that's a heck of a block. That is not bad work. 5.20 to play. If he grows much more, he might be a tight end. <laughs> He said he's a big man, 250 pounds. Three wide receivers to the right side of the field. One man in the backfield along with the quarterback Terrence Parks. He's going to throw. Looking deep. And it's going to be intercepted by Nebraska. Bowman, the junior, picks it off. Well, just a little bit too much air under this ball. Terrence Parks throws it out there, and it just hangs up in the air a long time, and the defense has a chance to react to it. Zachary Bowman playing back there deep in the secondary, covering Ziegler on the play, able to just get underneath it, and kind of just fly up in the air and make this grab. You see Terrence Parks loft the ball up, a lot of height on that throw, and good job of finding the football and making a catch. Overthrows uh, the receiver. Actually trying to get the ball out to Trent Shelton. And now Nebraska can just uh, keep it on the ground and uh, take some of that time off the clock with 5-11 to go. A lead of 23-14. 
A little change up there. You go to the eye backs and Cody Glenn. Give it to the fullback, the first one through. Glenn primarily has been used on those third down conversions. One time on uh, fourth down, he's got eight carries for 32 yards. Leading rusher in this game, Corey Ross, he's got 78. And as far as rushes, Ross is uh, 78. Have uh, outrushed the entire team. And I think Guy Baylor. Moore, yeah, I think Guy Morris needs to start thinking about timeouts now. You're four and a half minutes left in this ball game. You know you got to get the ball into your offense's hands at least two times. You need as much time. Oh, well, this is a help here. Nebraska having to call a timeout. Well, that's the last thing you want to do. Stop the clock. 4:26 to play. Nebraska helping out there. But how about that? I mean that's one of the things that really has hurt this team the fact that the Baylor has not been able to rush the football whatsoever. Well I think this is a good situation for the Bears because now they come over to the sideline and they're able to regroup and you need to put a plan in place. You need to tell your defensive front here hey we've got to do these things. You got to tell your linebackers do these things. Make a play here on second down. Bring up third down where you can win on third down. You have to have a plan when you go out there as a defense so that you can get your offense back out there on the field. So this is a good situation for Baylor to regroup and go out there and execute. Gary we've talked about about the defense of Nebraska. Well, they have been a difference maker here tonight. We talked to Adam Carriker and asked him, "What's the difference?" We're we're just uh, we're playing a lot of technique. We're playing we're playing hard. Like I've never seen a defense play this hard since I've been here. I mean, we play hard in the past, but we're like everyone's giving 100 percent, all they got. Everyone's just playing real hard. We're playing uh, technique, not a lot of mental bust right now. And uh, much better than what we saw a season ago. Well, and, and the production that they've had, you know, leading the nation in sacks, the tackles for loss, the quarterback hurries, the pass breakups in the secondary. You're seeing the makings of a, of a defense that's really starting to come of age and come into their own. And as you start going down the road here in the Big 12 and the Big 12 Conference, where you're going to have a heightened competition. You know, early in the season, they didn't have the, the highest level of competition early for, for Nebraska. Now they get into conference play. You know, everything is magnified. You've got the level of play high, heightened for both football teams as you go out there and Nebraska's defense certainly has done a good job tonight. Be another road test for Nebraska next week. They'll be in Columbia, Missouri. They're going to take on Gary Pinkle and Tigers. They won over Iowa State today in overtime did Mizzou and Baylor after tonight will be at Oklahoma and that's never an easy task to go face the Sooners. 426 to play 23 14 Cornhuskers. It's second down and five the ball resting on the 31 of Nebraska. Taylor hands it off to Ross finds a seam picks up the first down for the Cornhuskers and let's check in with Greg Sharp Greg you know this score hold road win for the Huskers who last year only went one and four away from Memorial Stadium they won their first game last year at Pitt but then in Big 12 play they went 0 and four in fact Nebraska has lost their last three conference road openers so this would be the first road win if this score holds up since 2001 to start league play for Nebraska away from Memorial Stadium a chance to go to five and one with a win they've got wins this season over Maine Wake Forest Pitt Overtime over Iowa State. The only loss coming into play tonight was against Texas Tech. They played them pretty tough. And Texas Tech is one of the top 10 teams, in my opinion, in the country with that wonderful offense that they have, Gary. Yeah, and I think Texas Tech's defense is really picking up a little bit this year as well. They're uh, they're complementing the offense. And sometimes when the Texas Tech offense is not uh, doing real well, that defense is giving them a little spark that they need. So I think, you know, next week we talked about it earlier that Texas Tech plays Texas. That's a big game in the Big 12 South. Now, Nebraska with a chance to win this football game as they look forward to the to their their uh, their conference foes here uh, in the Big 12 North kind of sets up to you know, be, be an interesting finish here uh, as we look at the Big 12 six schedule. Well, you look at the uh, Big 12 North with a win here tonight. Nebraska goes to two and one in conference play, and that will tie them up here with uh, Colorado at two and one. So Nebraska certainly has a great chance of getting back in the championship game with the Big 12. They hold their uh, destiny in their own hands. It's going to be under three minutes now with Baylor bringing up a third down here against Nebraska. And the clock is still running and they still have one timeout left. Excuse me. Baylor has two timeouts left and electing not to use them here. I, I'm one of those guys that I think hey when you, you stop the clock when you have control of it which means your offense is on the field where you control the clock and Guy Morris not electing to use his time answer. Two and a half and running on the clock third down and seven for the Cornhuskers. 
Pitch goes left side for Ross, cuts it up. He's going to be short, obviously, of the first down, and Nebraska's going to have to punt it away. And now they call the timeout, so it brings up a fourth down situation. But for Guy Morris and the Baylor Bears, there is no doubt, Gary, that they looked at this as one of the biggest games that they've had in years. Home field, take it on Nebraska, a team that uh, they had a chance to beat, and you know, still time to go, 227, but uh, they fared much better this season as they did uh, opposed to last year. Last year, they were absolutely blown out and embarrassed in Lincoln. Well, Baylor has to be proud of what they've accomplished so far this season, knowing that you know, the level of play increases as they go along through the season. Nebraska's a team that really is kind of still growing a little bit, and uh, they feel like that this might be a ball game that they could win, put a chance to put a notch up there on their belt, but right now it's looking like the Huskers have a chance to win this football game, but Nebraska, excuse me, Baylor, you know, people around the country and around the Big 12 Conference are thinking that, hey, Baylor is an improved football team. We talked about what they did against Texas A&M, where they had a chance to win that football game, but didn't win that one. But the big win they had last week against Iowa State on the road, I think, is key for them. Now, I think uh, you know, they're, they're an improved football team. How many games are they ultimately going to win this year? I think it's too early to tell, but uh, they certainly have improved, you know, from the time that Guy Morris has gotten here and to where they are right now. 2.27 to go. And Nebraska's going to kick it away. With a lead of 23 14. You know, we talked to Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska. And, you know, he's. Pretty, pretty to the point. You know, he's like, uh, you know, we're just going to go out there and get this done. He's very matter of fact with us, and I appreciate his point of view because he wants his guys to go out there and perform. And what they have done this season and the numbers we've talked about them, what they've put up, you know, that, that, that black shirt tradition is, uh, if it's not back at Nebraska, it's real close to being back there. And uh, he's got to be proud of how his team has played tonight, his defensive players in particular. Willie Andrews back deep to receive, standing on his 10. As we await the uh, start of play back up. Finally the whistles are blown and here we go. Sam Cook to kick it away. He's standing on his own 30. And a wonderful punt last time. Sneaking in is James Todd and they pick up on him. And the kick is away. They let it bounce. And it bounces in the end zone. Well, we talked about it earlier, Gary, the fact that uh, this is a NFL staff in many ways here at Baylor. Colin Allred had a chance to visit with him, and this is what he had to say about this staff. Well, they're just so consistent. They're the same every day. They've had pretty much the same staff for three years, and uh, they get along well, and they have their plan, and uh, it kind of carries down to us. Like, just their attitude flows to us, and uh, they've just been really positive and consistent since day one, and uh, it's working out now. Baylor's head coach Guy Morris 18 years in the NFL as a player as a coach and that's instant credibility. Oh no doubt about it. Getting players in here believing in themselves. And it's a long way to making a football team better. And it's another interception for the Cornhuskers this one from Daniel Bullocks. It's the second interception thrown by Terrence Parks. Now Nebraska can just uh, run out the clock with 2.05 to go. Well, Daniel Bullocks is back there. Quarterback is trying to throw the ball down the field to make a play, but Bullocks is just in good coverage and the ability to break around the receiver to make that play. Trent Shelton was the intended receiver. Daniel Bullocks, the ball thrown a little bit behind. Good athletic ability. Comes up with an interception. Defense has been making plays all night for these Huskers. And uh, comes up with another play there. And Bullocks is the All-American and Thorpe Award candidate. Came in with nearly 40 tackles, picks up the interception. He's a team captain, the strong safety for the Cornhuskers. The Baylor fans are filing out. Oh, now a loose football. Well, that's something impressive right there. Your quarterback goes down and gets his football. I think that Zach Taylor actually comes in there and gets that football. Sure was. He's watching his handoff. He turns, looks, and the ball comes out. Right there and watch this quarterback go after this ball. You don't see many quarterbacks go down getting dirty like this. That's a nice effort by Zach Taylor. Ball comes out. I think it was Green that knocked that ball out and 
Second time that uh, Corey Ross has fumbled here tonight. He's got a Husker down on the field. And Ross is down and slow to get up, and that's his right leg or right ankle that he is favoring. Putting a little weight on it as he heads towards the sidelines, and uh, that's a guy that Nebraska could ill afford to lose. Uh, it kind of looks like a cramp. I hope that's all it is for him, you know. Straighten out, out the leg, sure. Yeah. It's a hot night here. It was about, you know, game time temperature was close to 90 degrees. He's picked him up and put him down quite a few times tonight. Sure has. Ross tonight, 26 carries for 93 yards. A minute 37 to go. And taking the play clock all the way down, use as much time on that clock. Baylor still has one timeout left. And the handoff to Cody Glenn. He's still taking some tacklers with him. Down to the 35. Turnover margin, and uh, that's a big key here tonight, Gary. Yeah, it really is. When you can be plus four over your first five games with a chance to win all of them, that's pretty pretty positive for your team. And now you're just you're down two tonight. Those are the things that uh, you know when you play close ball games and teams that you feel like you have a chance to compete with. It usually comes down to field position, turnovers, those kind of things, and big plays. And uh, there's been some big plays made by Nebraska, and the turnovers have gone their way. Play clock down to two. And again, it's uh, Glenn on this third down carry. They had third and four to go. Short of the first down. Now yeah, they use their last time out there and brings up a fourth and short. Yeah, but I think that's. I would think that uh, Bill Callahan's going to probably put his punt team out there and kick that ball down deep and if they have any chance of going. All the way down the field will be more difficult if they can pin them inside the 10 yard line. So Nebraska is going to improve to five and one with the win here tonight. And be tied with Colorado in the Big 12 North for Baylor they go to one and two. But boy are they in one of the toughest divisions not just in the Big 12 but uh, you talk about in college football when you've got Texas and Texas Tech. Both those teams are in the uh, top 15 in the latest uh, USA Today poll. And Texas very well could be playing by the end of the season, Gary, for a national championship. Yeah, they've got the makings of a, of a national championship team. I've seen them play this year, and they are an ex explosive football team. They play good defense. They've got everything that kind of going for them, and they've got they've got confidence too. And uh, Texas Tech, uh, you know, I'm amazed at how that that system works for for uh, for Mike Leach. He's kind of plugging these different quarterbacks year in year out, and uh, Cody Hodges has stepped in and done a good job for them. So next week I think it's going to be a nice, fun ball game to watch. Uh, for that for those guys to go at it. It's close to the first down. Looks like they may have gotten it. Yeah, again, that's going to be the ball game here. Probably won't even get a playoff here though. But after they move the uh, the change and let's start that clock again. So it's a good win for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They've won 11 of the last 13 road contests. And that's going to be it. Bill Callahan and the uh, Cornhuskers go to five and one. Yeah, we'll have to snap it one more time here. Five and one's a good mark to get started on your season. Now you uh, set your eyes uh, on Big 12 North opponents, so hopefully you can compete there. So Bill Callahan's got his football team where they like to be. They had a chance to win uh, against Texas Tech last week, but lost it in the last play of the ball game. So I think he's got his team on track, and they're they're positive. Do they have some things they like to work on? Improve? Certainly they do. But uh, it's the makings of a good football team, especially when the defense is playing. Guy Morris and the Baylor Bears, nothing to be ashamed about because they have hung in there tough. Had a chance here in the second half to get right back in the game and a couple of costly penalties and turnovers. There's the difference in this game down the stretch. 23 14 our final as Nebraska goes to 5 and 1 and for Baylor. They will go overall to 4 and 2. Well, I think Grigsby really had an outstanding game for Nebraska, both in the punt return. Area and also in the secondary doing some things, you know, in coverage, picking up plays, uh, doing things overall. So I think he's had a big night tonight and he's coming of age as a sophomore cornerback and an impact player on that football team. See their fans traveled from Lincoln. They love it. Huge crowd of uh, Nebraska fans here in Texas.
Big 12 standings in the north. Now Nebraska tied with Colorado. They lost today 2 and 1. Mizzou is at 2 and 1 as well. Kansas State 1 and 2. Kansas at 0 and 2. Iowa State. A couple of uh, tough losses in overtime. They're now 0 and 3. But Nebraska certainly a chance to win the Big 12 North Gary and get themselves in that position to play for that championship. Yeah, a couple of teams here in Nebraska, Missouri going at it next week. Two teams that are both two and one of the conference. So that's going to be a key game for both football teams. And be interesting to see how that goes. What Brad Smith is going to show up in that contest. They've had a had a tough road of it sometimes this year. So we take a look at the Big 12 South with Texas Tech and Texas on top of that. Tech at 3 and 0, Texas at 2 and 0. A&M is 1 and 1 along with Oklahoma, Baylor 1 and 2. Now with this loss, 4 and 2 overall. Oklahoma State is at 0 and 2 and 3 and 2 overall. So our final here tonight, 23-14. Nebraska beats Baylor. Fun night here at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. Over 40,000 strong for Gary Reasons and Greg Sharp and our FSN crew. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Thanks for being with us. Nebraska goes to 5 and 1. Baylor drops to 4 and 2. 23 14, our final, and so long from Waco.